honey. Where's your father? Oh, he's still at the hotel. We have to go pick him up. Ocean's going to the party, isn't he? Oh, he'll be there. He had to go diving. He's going to meet us at the Phillips house. Wait a minute. You mean your father wants you to come to my sister's homecoming party? Yeah, your grandfather invited my whole family. I don't believe it. The eagles in these two families will not fit in one house. I mean, this entire island is hardly big enough. I haven't seen Maxine since she was 14. Right before she went off to boarding school. I think she still has the hots for me. In your dreams. Possessed or something. When you're underwater, your mind can play tricks, all right? You just gotta be tough. I'm just glad that I'm gonna make it to Maxine's party in one piece. Did you give Maxine my second message? Yes, of course I did, Mr. Cabelli. Joseph. What is it? I wanted to talk to you before the party. Listen, Maxine, I think we should commit to a wedding date. <laughs> Joseph, this is not the time to get into this again. I've got a million things to do. My grandfather's waiting in his room for We've me. We've survived three years of a long-distance relationship. You came back to the island so we could be together. It's what everyone is expecting. There's no point in waiting anymore. Once I've settled in and things have calmed down a little bit, we'll talk it through. See you at the party. Bye. Oh, a thing of beauty. Mwah. 
Ah, we need a bedroom right away. Oh, really? Huh. Good to see my brother's marriage has so much vitality. I do try. Just needs a room to change in, Will. I bet. <laughs> yeah, sure, you can use our room. Bonjour, mon cher. Hello. You have to wear that necklace, Contessa. You know Grace is going to be here. Robert, these jewels are mine. I don't care if they used to belong to Grace Summers. I refuse to hide them in a safe today on the off chance that she might get upset. Will you? All I'm saying is that we shouldn't demean ourselves by stooping to their level and causing a scene. I couldn't agree more. Not now, Contessa. Not now? Not at night? Not in the morning? When, might I ask you, Robert, would it be appropriate? Oh, I missed their old plantation house, a Phillips party. You owe me for this one, Rick. Even if we were still married, I wouldn't want to put myself through it. <laughs> You're the best, Grace. Hey, when I got my two girls, I'm on top of the world. Come on. Just remember who the two girls are. C come on, honey, give me a chance. Summers have arrived. Daughter's homecoming party is ruined. An afternoon with the Summers in. Maxine will probably want to turn around and leave the island. Kyle, why do you think your grandfather's invited the Summers to the party? I have no idea. Well, hopefully to show Maxine that we can live on this island in harmony. Come on, that's ridiculous, Dad. We let our guards down, the Summers will walk all over us. I'm worried about Father. I think he's losing touch. Well, Robert, let's hope that it doesn't run in the family. Ah, there you are. Father? Hi, Dad. Grandfather. Father. See, the Summers family has arrived. I know I can count on all of you to behave civilly in my house. Well, you certainly can count on us, but I don't think you can count on the Summers. Anthony, you've uh, proven yourself to be our shining leader at Paradise Rum. What do you think, huh? You agree with your father? You think it's pointless to try to get along with the Summers? Well, they've never made it easy, but I think it's time for us to rise above the squabbling. It's up to us to be the bigger ones. Stated like a true diplomat. <laughs> That's why he's the future of this family and of Paradise Rum. Well, if you gentlemen will excuse me, I'm going to go find my daughter. I know, by the way, can we not forget that this is a party for Maxine? Nice it is to see you. Hi, Ellen? Grace. My God, the Queen's jewels. Careful, Grace. No, I just meant they're divine. Good, because you're on my turf. Your turf? Is that a mafia term you picked up from your first husband? <laughs> uh, honey, I don't think Letitia understands your sense of humor. Please, Rick. Mrs. Phillips prefers that you use her nickname, Contessa. At least my nickname can be spoken out loud in polite society. If you ask me, I'd look better on you. <laughs> you would know. How's it going, sis? Hey, handsome. It's about time. Well, what do you say we go in there and show these Phillips how the summers work a party? Let's do it. My instincts are sometimes wild, but they're seldom wrong. 
I know your grandfather Phillips is welcoming you back with this big, beautiful party. But remember that you have your mother's side of the family. That you are not all Phillips. There is another blood running in your gorgeous veins. I never forget, Cromer. I feel it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ocean. Nice to see you. Is that Ocean Summers? Hey. He has grown into quite a man since you have been away. Yeah, with Chris. Oh, how good it is to see you. Welcome home. She is gorgeous, isn't she? Oh. Ooh, there's Ocean. Chris, don't encourage him. Encourage him? What are you talking about? He's my friend. Yeah, well, maybe you ought to be more careful about the company you keep. Hey, Al. How's it going? Good. You look great. Thank you. Can I borrow your brother for a minute? Dive conference. Please, let me interrupt anything <laughs> at work. You can feel the history just by Stop. holding it. There's one down there. There's got to be more. Ow! Look at some maps and a search grid. What was that? It was nothing. Intertwined dolphins. We're on to something, man. What we found down there today is just the beginning. An ancient sunken treasure worth millions. The weight of the gold, the detail, there's a power to it. A magic. Unquestionably way cool. I'm not talking about pleasure diving anymore. Treasure hunting full time. You in with me or not? 50 50 partners. You can't breathe a word of this to anyone. It's too valuable. Of course, it's our secret. Come on. Quiet, everyone. Quiet, please. Party's great. Quiet, please. I want to thank you all for coming to welcome my lovely granddaughter back to St. Martin. Maxine, I want you to know we're so happy you've come home. And to my daughter. To our daughter. May you live with us here on this island happily ever after. Cheers. 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 And now, the special news. <clears throat> I have a surprise announcement. Maxine and I are getting married. Now, there'll be a lot to plan, but we don't want to wait forever, so we'll tie the knot in, what, six weeks? Right, Maxine? Wonderful, isn't it? Oh, sweetheart. Bravo, you've done it. You'll no longer be my son by a bad first marriage. You'll be part of the Phillips family. Maxine, are you all right? I always knew I would marry Joseph, but this was a shock. Then do not do it if you are not happy. Yes, of course I'm happy. It's just such a surprise to hear the words spoken in front of everyone. Maxine! You've become a woman so quickly. <laughs> I'm proud of you, darling. <laughs> Joseph's a fine man. What a nice surprise. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Wow. My little baby. Mm, I can't believe it. Come, let me get the engagement announcement kit. Mm -hmm. You and your father and your grandfather. And mother, you too, yes. Madame de Gaulle. Come. Come, everybody. Yes. Everybody smile. 
actually said the words, Joseph, I want to marry you. But we both know it's what you wanted. I was tired of getting caught in the words. I went for the emotion. Joseph, I always knew we'd eventually get married, but I don't like being pushed into things. Okay. Sorry. I blew it. Marriage isn't something you just throw out as a surprise in front of everyone on the island. Maxine. You know how traditional I am. I'm always afraid I'll bore you. I mean, I thought it would be exciting for you. Something you wouldn't expect from me. Something a little more traditional would have been a lot better. Maxine, I will love you till death do us part. There's no turning back now, is there? We did announce it. Yes, Joseph, I'll marry you. Could I talk to you in private for a minute? Of course, Rick. Uh, you're going nice today. Thanks. Rick, I am so happy you and your family have come here for our celebration. Thanks, Christophe. You know, uh, despite our family differences, I've always appreciated the way that you and I were able to look at things. We understand one another. I sometimes feel I relate to you better than I do to my own sons. Well, I have a great love and respect for you. I hope you know that I'd never take advantage of our friendship. I know that. Tell me something. Uh, how would you feel about giving me a business loan? Rick! Summers. It's certainly been a long time since you were last in this house. Hello, Robert. How are you? Uh, tell me something. Are you... And Grace married or divorced? I'm always afraid to ask. <laughs> well, right now we're divorced, but I'm determined to get her back. You know, I hope I'm not interrupting a private meeting. The notion of a private meeting is very foreign to this family. We always do things very openly and together. Now, did I hear you say you needed money, Rick? Uh, Robert takes special pride in handling Philip's financial matters. I trust it's not the hotel in trouble. Uh, no. Uh, I'm just going to make a few improvements, that's all. Well, certainly you could find a bank. Yeah, you're absolutely right. If you'd like to make an appointment and stop by my office. You know, I don't think so. Thanks for the offer, though. Uh, would you two excuse me? I left Grace alone outside. I know you'd never loan him money behind my back. How comforting. My son knows me so well. You be good, my lovely daughter. Yes,
home, Maxine. Thanks, Ocean. It's been a long time. You're a lot more than a little girl I remember. So you must be excited about your wedding plans. Yes, thrilled. Yeah, I was watching you when Joseph made the announcement. I could tell it was a big moment for you. One of life's turning points. Point of no return? No. No, I didn't say that. Good. I'm glad. Damn you, Summers! You never change! Always oh, doing something else, girl! Stay away from my What's sister! What's going on? Kyle, stop! Get out of this house! All right? Yeah. Don't worry, we're leaving. Come on. Come on. Ellen, don't you ever come back! I'm sorry, Rick. What happened? Feeds on itself, this fighting between the two families. When will it stop? Thanks for coming to the party, honey. It meant a lot. Good night, Mom. Good night, sweetie. Good night, sis. Yeah. I'll be back in a bit, Dad. You coming in, son? Yeah, I'll be in a few minutes, Dad. Wait, please. If anyone found you here, no one will ever know. How did you get past the dogs? <laughs> Special biscuit straight from Paris. Stop any dog on the island. You're dangerous. I remember the 12-year-old girl who used to follow me and her brother's cliff diving. No one could stop me. And you always wanted to go to the highest point. Far beyond where your brothers would go. You and I were the only ones that would dare dive that high. Maxine, can I come in? I just wanted to apologize for the fight at the party. I know it put a damper on things. Thanks, Kyle. It's just that when I heard Ocean Summers throwing out his sleazy lines, I... Kyle, we were just having a conversation. You don't know how he operates. I watched what he did to Hilda Rotterdam. He made a game out of pulling her away from me. And once he won her, he cut her cold. I mean, of course she's gonna go back to drugs. The way he twisted her... Sounds like someone's out there. Sounds like they're tearing him apart. I 
better go check on them. Be careful, Maxie. This ocean has a riptide, and he will drag you under. Good night. Come on, you can tell me. I am the most loyal confidant in the Caribbean. I know, Eve, but... I can handle this. It's... Maxine. Maxine Phillips. Oh, well, that's great. That's great. There is a match made in heaven. This is exactly what you need. It's just this feeling I get when I'm near her. You are playing dynamite, my friend. Well, then I had better become an expert on explosives. Good night. I am convinced trade winds is in dire straits, Confessor. Oh, don't be silly. Diana Worthington said she had to bite tooth and nail to get her Thanksgiving reservation. Well, Rick would only ask Christoph for a loan as a last resort. Oh, trade winds. The crown jewel of the Caribbean. Tarnished. This is my chance, Contessa. I am going to take over the hotel. I'm going to own it. That land was once Philip's land. You know, they cheated us out of the deed, so it's only fitting that we take the hotel. But how can you, Robert? Rick would never let you. Well, how you. I do, it's not important. What matters is that I can feel in every bone in my body that the hotel will be mine. <sighs> Ours. Queens. No, thank you. Scotch and water. I hope I see you at this evening. Count on it. Place your bed, please. Change for 10,000. Place your bet, sir. <clears throat> Deal, sir. <laughs> Bank wins. OK, I've been on a down streak. But it's only a matter of time before I turn it around. I mean, I was feeling something out there tonight, Duncan. You know, there's this sense I always get before I'm about to win big. I had it tonight. You can't cut me off. You're down $150,000, money you can't pay. Last night it was $75,000. That's why you have to give me a chance to turn it around. But Duncan, I can come up with the money. 
In the past month, I've come up with... Close to a million dollars. You're up there with the big high rollers, Anthony. And I'm worried your well is run dry. That's ridiculous. Just extend me a little more credit. You cut off. The dealers know not to let you sit at their tables until you pay up. <sighs> After all the money this casino has made off of me? I can't protect you any longer. What is that supposed to mean? The people in Curacao who own this place, they make their own rules. And frankly, I'm scared for you. I'm glad you and Dad are talking again. Yes, we're talking. Can you tell you about what's going on at the hotel? Ellen told me he hasn't been able to meet the trade winds loan payments. I feel like I've let Dad down. Like it's my fault. It's not written in stone that you have to work at the hotel. His parents built the hotel, and he never once in his life questioned working there. In India, Kenya. He never understood what those adventures meant to me. I understand. The irony is, I'm on the verge of finding something that's going to save the hotel. Well, let's see some irony. Save the hotel, Ocean, for the Summers family. Hey, uh, how you doing, Sarah? Hi. Phil, thanks. Ready to go. Great. You okay? Thanks a lot. Sarah always comes through. Ready? Let's roll. One reading down there. Not even a tin can. Chris, we can't expect to find this treasure first time out. We've got to be prepared to hunt for it. Yeah, I was thinking that maybe we should talk to Kristoff about the medallion. Chris, My we... grandfather knows everything about these waters. I mean, he used to dive here all the time when he was young. Chris, we can't take anyone else into the fold. It is just not worth it. I think we can trust my grandfather. Trust is a risky thing. It means you're vulnerable. But you trust me. Of course I trust you. We have a pact based on knowing one another our entire lives. We don't let anyone else in, and it works. Yeah, but what if Kristoff knew something that could help us? Chris, we can't tell anyone what we're doing. If we do, we're lost. Once the bridal gazebo is in place, we'll be able to visualize the wedding a lot better. 
It's barely been 24 hours. Marigo, Maxine's nervous about planning a huge wedding. No, 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 darling. No, 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 darling. Just a small family affair. 50 around the gazebo. Immediate family and close friends. That's all. 50 for the wedding and at least 300 for the reception. My mom. Maxine. <laughs> We have to invite all the Paradise Rum employees. That's over a hundred right there. And we have to ask the officials from both the Dutch and the French side of the island. Three hundred people? Come on, Maxine. Let your mother have a little fun. Thank you, Joseph. You are the only daughter. This is a very important event, and everybody will want to be there. I can tell you one name will leave off the list. Summers. <laughs> Let me show you what I'm going to do with the pool. I'm going to cover it. That's a drawing of the medallion that we found. Let it go, Chris. Let it go. What do you mean, Grandpa? There are some mysteries in life we'll never understand. Do you agree? Yes. Intertwined dolphins. It's from a Spanish galleon that went down 300 years ago. La Targa. Oh, I wish I hadn't ignored my warning. Your warning? Chris. I, I want you to listen very carefully to what I'm about to tell you. I know it's easy to be skeptical, but I, I ask you to keep an open mind, that's all. Of course, Grandpa. Many years ago, I was at the open market in town when I felt someone watching me. A, a look at him made my blood run cold. Wherever I turned, he seemed to be there. And what does this have to do with the treasure? It was death, Chris. Death? What do you mean Intuitively, death? Intuitively, I knew in the essence of my being. When death shows his face, there's not even a shred of doubt. Finally, I lost him down an alley, but I felt so uneasy and restless. I, I decided not to go home. You know that little shack I own over at Sandy Ground? Yeah. I went there and just lay down on the floor until I fell asleep. When I woke, it was dark. There was a knocking at the door. Who was it? It was him. That's strange. He said if I didn't leave a targa in the water, he would begin to take my family. And he turned away and left. But I tell you, he chilled my bones. And you stopped diving? After a week, I convinced myself it was all voodoo, hocus pocus. I wanted to find the rest of Latarga. Your grandmother and I were scheduled to go on a picnic. But I persuaded her to take the plane to St. Bart's with Rick Summer's parents. And I dove for the treasure. Didn't find anything that day. But when I came ashore, an island woman I'd never met before said to me, You had your warning, but you invited death in. Words cut into me like broken glass. And I raced home. When I got there, I learned the news about your grandmother. She died in a plane crash with the Summers. In my heart, I've always felt I killed her, as if I'd used my bare hands and Rick's parents, too. Grandpa, it wasn't your fault. Learn from me, Chris. Don't challenge fate. There are things that I have to do for myself. You must stop looking for Lataga. Grandpa, Let it I lie in the can't. water untouched. Now you have your warning. Don't try to understand. Do as I say. I've made a commitment to Ocean. I have to help him find it. And which will take precedence? Your commitment to Ocean Summers or your birthright obligation to me and your family? Don't invite death into the Phillips house again. Hello, Ocean. 
Hello, Joseph. Come on. Come on. You uh, want to give that a try, Ocean? I'm getting in extra good shape for my bride. OK, Joseph. ask you. I'm trying to come up with the perfect honeymoon spot. Now, it's got to be a place that Maxine has never been before, and it has to be really romantic. She's the romantic type. Too heavy? No, I got it. Anyway, I want it to be someplace fresh and exciting, you know, to symbolize our, our new life together. Someone suggested Tokyo is a really different place that she's never been, but I don't know. It just doesn't sound sexy enough to me. It has to be sexy. I'm finished here. Yeah, so, any suggestions? Yeah, if Maxine were with the right person, it wouldn't make a difference where she went. Are you so exclusive you can't even say hello? <laughs> hello, Leticia. You're feeling blue, aren't you? Mm, preoccupied. Things getting prickly with Grace again? No, I'm just taking care of a little business. You know, I'll never forget how you used to take me sailing. <laughs> that little boat of yours, what was it called? Lightning. And Leticia, we were a couple of kids then. But you loved me, didn't you, Dickie? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm distracted. I better get back to the hotel. Are you in some kind of trouble with trade winds? Maybe I could help. As you're well aware, I'm a woman of many resources. Oh, I know that. What's in it for you? Nothing, really. Except, maybe a little bit more of the best thing I ever had. I know an intimate out-of-the-way beach where we could swim and discuss the details. Thanks for the offer, but I better get back to the hotel. <gasps> I've never been turned down before. Well, you better get used to it. I don't think so. The intertwined dolphins are an emblem for a Spanish galleon called La Targa. La Targa? I was at the uh, library in town, and I was looking through the archives, and I found an illustration of the dolphins exactly like the one in the medallion. So the ship's history is recorded in the archives. She smashed into a reef during a hurricane in 1693. She's called the Ghost Galleon. Kind of cool, huh? The Ghost Galleon? Why the Ghost Galleon? It has to do with the legend of her passengers. Legend? What legend? When she crashed into the reef, her uh, center mass was still sticking up above water, and a few of the passengers managed to climb up to the crow's nest. They made it through the storm. God. Finally, a handful of survivors were rescued, stark, raving mad. But one of them talked about an underwater cave where they kept the most valuable cargo. According to all records, nothing was ever found. What reef did she hit? It's recorded as off St. Kitts. Oh, St. Kitts. What if that part's wrong, Chris? I mean, St. Martin's Windward Shoreline looks a lot like St. Kitts. What if in the original logbook 300 years ago, it was recorded wrong? That's why no one's ever found a trace of her, because she's here on St. Martin.
Come on, Chris. Look, can we hold off on this treasure, honey? Chris, man, what are you talking about? You go ahead. I just told you that whole story about the treasure. Don't do this to me. Come on, man. Look, there is a lot of family pressure on me right now, okay? I'll miss you, partner. Is my fault. Yeah, I saw them from Simpson's lookout, off that uh, reef by Devil's Rock. We gotta get there first, you understand? Anthony! Give me about 20 minutes. I'm glad I saw you. I've been wanting to talk to you, and I can never seem to get your attention in the office. What is it? I found some inventory discrepancies in your department. Yeah, well, I'm running to an appointment right now. Well, maybe we could discuss it this afternoon. Don't worry about the inventory, August. I'll manage it from my end. Anthony! I don't want to have to go above you to get this taken care of. There is no one above me, August. I run the department. I used to be incredibly frustrated. <laughs> and you're not now? I wanted to make love with you so badly for a while, I didn't think I'd be able to stand it. But you survived. Yeah, I'm glad now. Now that the wait is almost over. The old-fashioned ways. <laughs> we'll wait until our wedding night. Something we can be proud of. Something we can hold as pure and as sacred. It's best we waited. I think it's best we waited, too. It's a way for us to begin our life together. I promise you that we will have a storybook marriage start to finish. It's like we're living in a perfect paradise, don't you? yesterday's dive, Chris. Keep the faith. The treasure's down there. We are gonna find it. Yeah. We'll go out again tomorrow. All right. Wait a minute. See ya. Stop thinking about you once. I'm about to get married. I want to take you someplace, my favorite spot on the whole island. No, no, I, I can't. You can. It's just like taking that first step off the high cliffs. I'll meet you in Saunders Alley behind the post office. Where did Maxine say she was going? It didn't seem to make any sense. Yes, if you have your whole life to be with Maxine, spend a little time with your mother now. Oh, look at this photo, Al. It's from Tangier. Oh, Joseph. This would be perfect for the wedding pictures. You're right. Thank you. 
to run away from everyone else when we were kids. I'd follow you anywhere back then. Traveling around the world, I've thought about you, Maxine. I've thought about you a lot. <laughs> I never grow tired of this view. Right after I got on your bike, I knew this is where you were taking me. <laughs> How'd you know? Because this is my favorite place, too. I know you're in there. Kyle, you don't understand. No, Maxine. Leave your sister alone. This is where you used to always bring Hilda Rotterdam. Or didn't he tell you that? Stop! Come on, man, come on! Stop this now! I'm leaving. I'll go home with Kyle. Maxine, don't. It's what I have to do. You push me, Kyle, you better be ready to be pushed back. You destroyed Hilda. But I swear to God, I won't let you get to my sister. Maxine, I am just trying to protect you. I don't want you to get caught in this web. I don't need your help. Well, I think you do need my help. I mean, what is it going to look like, you coming up here with him? Maxine, what would Joseph think? Kyle, you can't tell anyone. Ocean wants to break up your wedding, Maxine. For the fun of it, he would love that. Kyle, you don't understand. But I am not going to let him destroy this family. So if you won't agree to stop seeing him, I'll fix it so he can't see you. I'd like to help you, Rick, but my hands are tied. Have you no other resources? Uh, virtually all our money was lost in that Miami savings and loan default four years ago. Then the storm damaged in 89. I had to take out a second mortgage. I mean, I talked to all the banks, done everything else I could think of. I turned to you because you become like a father to me. Rick, ever since the plane crash that killed your parents, it was my idea to give you the deed to this land your father built trade winds on. And no one in your family's ever known. 
So as far as Robert is concerned, trade winds are still sitting on Philip's property. Property that I supposedly stole. I can never tell my family. They wouldn't understand. They'd say I gave away the best piece of land on the island, their inheritance. They'd never forgive me. Yeah, Robert's always been jealous of our friendship. No, it's more than that. I... I have to keep peace in my family. I owe it to my sons and grandchildren. I'll get the hotel back together somehow. If your parents were alive, they'd be proud, Rick. No matter what happens, I'll never forget the help and the support that you've given me. Forgive me, Rick. Please forgive me. For my family's sake, I... I just can't lend you the money. I'm not ready to marry you, Joseph. Not in six weeks. I'm sure you don't mean that, Maxine. Everything was perfect. You were so happy. And now, just like that, it's over? I'm not saying it's... it's over forever. I just... can't handle all the pressure. Pressure? Maxine, what are you talking about? I'm sorry, Joseph. Sorry? You think you can just say you're sorry and it's gonna be okay? I need more time. Maxine, you can't just decide that you need more time. It doesn't work like that. God, everything is set. Have you thought about the embarrassment that this could cause me? Have you thought about your family? Believe me, I have. We may not survive this. Postponing is the best chance we have. Let's not forget who brought on this wedding deadline in the first place. Hotel's in trouble. We've been missing the loan payments. I know. Ellen told me. Well, I didn't want to burden you with it. Oh, I... Rick, please. I want to know. I want to help. Well, I haven't been able to refinance with any of the banks. I asked Christoph for a loan, but he turned me down. What are you going to do? Grace, I want you to come back to the hotel. I thought we agreed it was best that I not work there anymore. Ah, well, this is... An emergency. I think you're just gonna have to forget about our past conflicts. Think about your 45% interest in the hotel. Rick. Now, come on. It'll be like the old days, you know? We'll be the unstoppable, dynamic duo. <laughs> Those were fun times, weren't they? I've missed you so much. Right. My fault. Right. My fault. Rick, if anyone can save this hotel, it's you. Hell, you have more strength and force of will than any man I've ever known. That same magnetism I fell for when I first met you. You're the one who makes me strong. I thought together that we'd have a shot at turning this whole thing around. Listen, my womanizing days are over. Let me prove it to you. What do you say? If I came back, it would be just business. Oh, yeah, just business. Nothing more. Promise? Absolutely. Yes. Excuse me again, Anthony. I know you said you were handling the inventory, but uh, there's still some serious inconsistencies. August, I'll straighten it out with you first thing tomorrow morning. 
Good morning, Ed. Hello, August. Hello. My lord, what happened to your face? I uh, fell. I was water skiing. Oof. I was just setting up an inventory meeting with your son. Well, that's what I like to see from my managers, hands on. I'll see you tomorrow. Are you sure you're okay? Actually, I think I might be coming down with something. The bank is ready to foreclose on trade winds. Does that make you feel any better? Yes. Yeah, of course it does. I'll tell you my takeover plan on the way to the courthouse. Why don't you meet me there in what, five minutes? Uh, Dad, I'm actually not feeling too well. Why don't you go on without me? Okay. We'll talk this afternoon. Good shot, Grandpa. Thanks. Tell me, Kyle, has your brother Chris mentioned anything to you about a sunken treasure he's diving for? No. I have a bad feeling he hasn't heeded my warning. What warning, Grandpa? About a ship that sank 300 years ago. A danger that's part of this island. Real as the salt in the air or rumbling thunder in the night. My sense is that Chris has deliberately disobeyed me. I know he and Ocean will continue to dive for the treasure unless they're stopped or scared off. It's Ocean that's pushing you. I know that. Summer's dragging a Phillips into danger. That Ocean could use a good scare. Let me help you, Grandpa. No, Kyle, I wouldn't expect you to do that. I'm sure I could think of the right way to handle it. See? You know what to do when you put your mind to it. We have to keep at it. That boat's headed right for us. Grab the anchor. What are you doing? You can't show up here like this. Hey, you hired me to find the treasure and scare the guys off. Yeah, well, you haven't done either very successfully. 
Get out of here. Hey, it costs money to run a boat like that. Now I ain't leaving until you pay me. Stay here. Understand? <laughs> Bonjour, Anthony, Anthony. Sweetheart, I haven't seen you in a couple of days, and look what happened. I just fell down some stairs on the way to the beach. I know about stairs from my first husband. Those bruises aren't caused from stairs. But, uh, Mom's late. I gotta go. Get to the office. Anthony, you're not in some kind of trouble, are you? Of course not. I know you, Anthony. I'm your mother. We're cut from the same cloth. And I know better than anyone, it's not always a perfect weave. Anthony. Oh, come on. Tell me everything. Like you used to. It's just so hard. Trying to live up to all the expectations. Sometimes. I mean, I'm doing my best, but sometimes... I make mistakes like everyone else. Does it involve one of those cheap island women that you always seem to find yourself so attracted to? Mom, please. Anthony, I only meant that, like me, you have desires that lead you into trouble. Our tanks need to be filled. I left the mud back next to the air compressor. Okay, then we're ready first thing in the morning. Thanks. Thanks. I think we should go diving right after sunrise tomorrow. Then I'll meet you at the boat. Does that boat look familiar? Very. What's the uh, metal detector for? I dropped my gun in the water. I wanted to retrieve it. Did you find it? You want to see it? Yeah, just in case you happen to lose it again, I'll know who to return it to. That's a gun. You ever seen one before? You're going to be sorry for that. No, you'll be sorry for the watch when you steer that damn boat. Watch, that's pretty dress. Going with the Contessa to see Joseph sworn in as public prosecutor. I'm glad you're going. Joseph is a wonderful boy. Here, taste. Mm. Mm. All day long, you simmer measured pinches of curry and coconut. There's an art to a Caribbean goat stew like choosing the right husband. I season according to my taste what's right for me. But a novice can learn how to develop her taste according to the experience of a more knowledgeable cook, no? W what are you saying, Mama? I know you would be happy with Joseph. I don't want to see you throw your life away with a mistake. All I said was I wanted to postpone the wedding. I don't think that's throwing my life away. That depends. What made you change your mind, Maxine? Have you been talking to Kyle? It doesn't matter who I've been talking to. What is important here is that you don't let your young heart lead you into a life of tragedy. You finished the stew, Mama. I can see we have different ideas about seasoning. Kyle, bring drinks for everyone. 
But I think the ceremony was great, actually. I really appreciate that you came. It means a lot. Especially after, you know, postponed the wedding. You didn't have to. Of course. Joseph, <laughs> this was an important ceremony. I wanted to be here for you. I love you, Maxine. Thank you. I better go. Thanks. Bye. She wouldn't have called off the wedding without a reason. Something or someone has changed her mind. There wouldn't be someone else. Would you do have that an to enemy, me. Joseph. That much I'm sure of. You need to find out who that enemy is and then go to battle. I want you to talk to Kyle. Sorry about Maxine and the wedding. I know this can't be easy. We're just talking about a delay. Oh, yeah? That's good. That's good. You don't think there's someone else. Someone who might have changed her mind. Yes, Joseph, I do think there's someone else. Some Ocean Summer. I can't believe that Maxine would fall for his love. He's not content with Maxine. He's working on Chris, too. He's got him involved in using his boat, looking for sunken treasure, and going against my grandfather's wishes. He has to be stopped. I have not read Descartes since Paris. My days as a celebrated tarot reader for the world's rich and powerful are long over. I find the cards exhaust me now. A reading might give me some peace. Oh, sweet Maxine. I cannot bear the flicker of sadness in your eyes. You must be troubled to rely on the cards so. I have this restless energy inside me. Then let that energy lead the passion beating in your heart. Thank you, Grandma, for caring about my heart when no one else would. One question only, please. Tell me about Ocean. What do the cards have in store for him? card makes it better. Mon Dieu. Death? You must go to Ocean and warn him of the definite nature of the cards. He must fight for his life. Thanks. Grandpa knows you're going after the treasure with Ocean. Grandpa says that treasure's dangerous. I believe him. Grandpa knows this island better than anyone else. 
You want to wait until something happens before you believe Grandpa Chris? Look, nothing bad is going to happen, okay, Kyle? It scares me. I'm worried about you. I've done a lot of thinking, Rick. It's been a tough time of soul-searching and rehashing. But I've decided to throw myself into this decision full force. I'm going to give you another chance. I believe people can change. I think you can change. <laughs> so let's wipe the slate clean and start fresh. OK. I'd love that. You tell me your days of indiscretion are over. I owe it to you to take your word for it. I'll agree to start working here part time. As far as anything else, let's leave ourselves open and see where it takes us. I won't let you down, honey. Here's a present for both of us. A commission check. $12,000, enough to cover payroll. Real estate may be dull, but it does have occasional rewards. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Mm. I promise it won't take long to make this money back. We are going to fight for this hotel with everything we're made of. As a complete family. It's the only way we can win. And don't count out Ocean, either. He told me he's going to save this hotel, and you know what? I believe him. <laughs> going to see him, aren't you? Do you have a special spot? A private place where you two always meet? Just what are you talking Look, about? I know about you and Ocean. This is not what you think. It was a more exciting, Maxine, when we were actually engaged. That had kind of a thrill to the affair. Joseph, don't do Can this you. Can you imagine yourself. thinking that you know someone? You know them better than anyone else in the world and you find out they weren't who you thought they were at all. I'm sorry, but I have to go now. You won't be able to brush me off that easily, Maxine. I'm sorry. I'll explain everything later. I have to go. In my eyes, you're still my fiance. $9,500. This is a joke, right? This won't buy groceries. Look, it takes time to come up with that kind of money. Having a hard time covering your tracks at Paradise Run. That has nothing to do with it. You got to do something, Anthony. People in Curacao are calling your problem my fault. All right, all right. You take uh, ancient coins and medallions, gold, and silver. No consideration for antique value. You pay your market price for gold and silver. All right, I'm working on something. I don't care what you're working on. Just deliver. Ocean? Maxine, you tell me she's your fiance. Did you sleep with her? You're gonna be sorry that you don't have the intelligence or the breeding to leave her alone. You talk like she's something you own. Maxine will make up her mind. She'll decide who she wants to see, not you. She might be a little confused right now, but she'll never have her summers.
Yes. Got your message. Urgent. Underlined three times. What's the deal? Come on, I want to show you something. Now, those cells at the Century Fort were used to hold pirates, criminals, and insane people, right? You're thinking that one of the mad survivors from Latarga was held there. Exactly. I was up at the fort, and I made a drawing. It's kind of crude, but what we have here is a treasure map. Here's the link, the intertwined dolphins. And look at this. It's exactly like the reef we've been diving at. I checked it on my charts at home. And you see this mark? Yeah. I think it's supposed to be an underwater cave. And with this mark and that cross, the treasure. We could actually find this. Chris, this is it, buddy. Tomorrow, our lives will change. Maxine. Ocean, listen to me, please. You're in danger. What do you mean? Romeo gave me a reading today. She's never seen the cards line up like this before. Maxine, I don't believe in psychic cards. Are you diving tomorrow? Yeah, with Chris at 7. Don't, Ocean, please. I have to. I've been working towards this. It's going to help me and my family. It's going to help us. Maybe tomorrow morning, when both you and my brother are there at the dock, I can talk to the two of you together. I'll convince you not to go. I have to leave. They're expecting me at the house. Maxine! I love you. I don't know what I would do if I never saw you again. Sure, you don't mind me using your tank. I offered it, didn't I? I mean, it's a bigger tank, and since I use a lot less air, I'll be able to stay down about the same amount of time. You sure you don't mind? No. How do you feel? Great. And you? Looks like we're gonna find something. Something big. You ready? Let's do it. Watching Ocean and Chris. Oh? And where are Ocean and Chris?
go diving again after what happened. That's okay. I've been thinking about the treasure. We need to sell some of it off right away and put the money into the hotel. Let's just wait till things settle down a bit. The treasure's locked in the hotel safe now. That's the best place for it. We don't have time to wait, Dad. The bank's ready to foreclose. They're gonna take the hotel if we wait. Then we'll deal with that situation if it happens. I know losing Chris down there was hard for you. Dad, I'm talking about trade wins. The whole reason I went diving for Latarga was... was to save the hotel. 
and I appreciate that. I'm proud of you. It's okay to feel the pain. looking for you. You've been hard to find lately. You've been diving for my treasure without me, haven't you? Your treasure? That's a joke. Everyone on this island knows what Ocean found. There should be a lot of people looking for more of it. Why shouldn't I? Find anything? Does it look like I came up with anything? Does it? I want you to take me out there now. I want to go diving. $500 in my hand before I do anything else. I'll pay you after. Forget it. Dave, I don't think you realize how difficult I can make your life on this island. Anybody who looks at this uh, lovely boat of yours knows that it was bought with drug money. And I'm willing to bet you didn't cover your drug smuggling tracks too carefully, did you? How does uh, 10 to 15 years in a Curacao prison sound to you? You should be the one worrying about jail conditions. What are you talking about? Your cousin is dead. That was a diving accident. What if they find out it wasn't an accident? No, there's no chance of that. Well, I got some details. I think the authorities might be interested. I'm a Phillips. They're never going to believe you. <laughs> You're wrong, Anthony. It's because you are a Phillips that they'll believe me. Hello, Mother. The doctor said that Christoph's heart attack could have been a lot more damaging if that nurse hadn't been right there on the dock. He's lucky. Yes, I talked to the nurse myself. Her name is Lisa Topping, and she was on a cruise ship just here for the day. But I understand Christoph has asked her to stay a few days to nurse him back to health. My grandfather is as strong as a horse, with a will harder than iron. He'll pull through. I can't believe it about your dear brother, Maxine. I'm so sorry. Thanks. I uh, just came to pay my respects to Kristoff. He's still very ill. I'm sure he's only seeing family members today. I just wanted to let him know I was here. Come on, Maxine. We have to get back. No, not now. I have to go home. I have to be with my mother. Tomorrow after the funeral? No. Tomorrow night. Where? You know our greenhouse above Orient Point? Yes. Meet me there at 9 o'clock. Okay. What was so important? Can't you see he'll never offer you any kind of comfort? Ocean, like your mother, you need to learn when to back off. Was there an autopsy on Chris's body? Of course. It's a routine and an accidental death. I want a full investigation. The autopsy confirmed death by drowning. There's nothing more to investigate. I'm afraid the matter is closed. I don't accept that, Major Rotterdam. You'll learn. What steps do I need to take to start a formal inquest of foul play? Are you the guardian of your brother's estate? 
No, my father is. If your father came to us, father requests to open an investigation, I take it seriously. Fine, then. Count on you for my father. Your brother's dead, Mr. Phillips. Nothing you do will turn back the hands of time. I can look back where the hands have been, and I want to look carefully. When I found my own daughter hanging by her neck inside that closet, I wanted someone to pay. I would have liked a full investigation. But the review of Hildy's death showed a straightforward suicide. I had to accept that. I wasn't granted any privilege for my family name. If I had investigated, perhaps I would have started with you. It was drugs made my Hildy do it, and she learned about drugs from you. Ocean Summers made Hilda kill herself. Ocean Summers caused my brother's death, too. This time, you'll have a clear-cut reason to throw him in prison. I tried to warn Chris about Latago. You knew that we were diving for the treasure? No one will own those riches. They belong to the sea. It's like my grandson. You don't believe me. You'll have to learn it for yourself. The ancient medallions, the gold, the jewels. You may have them now. They'll slip through your fingers. I've been telling visitors to stay just a few minutes. He needs to stay calm and rest, and talking to you seems to have drained him more than the others. I'll be at my grandson's funeral tomorrow. As long as I'm alive, I'll be there. Stay calm. <laughs> I call her my angel. Came out of nowhere to save me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about his death. Well, they say time heals all wounds. No. Not this one, I'm afraid. Meteorologists are watching a tropical storm called Consuela moving westward across the Atlantic. Bonjour, Pierre. Bonjour, Madame Contessa. Pierre, I'm coming to you because I know you won't let me down. I'm in a bit of a jam. I need to wear these to my nephew's funeral tomorrow, and the clasp is broken. Please accept my condolences, madame. Let me see. Yes, of course, madame. I can have this fixed for you this afternoon and deliver it to your house. Thank you. Pierre, I know this watch. It belongs to Rick Summers. Well, yes, madame. It did belong to him. He pawned the watch his parents gave him? Well, madame, I really shouldn't tell you this. Pierre, I'm your best customer. You better tell me everything. He bartered the watch for a diamond ring yesterday morning. A diamond ring? An engagement ring. I think he and Mrs. Summers are getting back together again. It's romantic, no? No, Pierre. I think premature describes it. I wouldn't be in a rush to sell this watch. I have a strong feeling Rick Summers will be in here returning the ring and wanting his watch back. Well, you must know about the accounting errors in the books. It's too much money for you not to know about. Of course I know about it. Like you say, it's a bookkeeping error. And I'm taking care of the problem. I didn't go to anyone else, Anthony, because the problem is exclusively in your department. But this kind of financial chaos reflects on me. Financial chaos? Haven't you listened to a word I've said? I know about the problem, and I am straightening it out. <laughs> do, do you like your, uh, your job here at Paradise, Ron August? Yes, I do. Yeah, there can't be too many other opportunities of the Paradise Rum caliber here on St. Martin for a bright, young, ambitious MBA. I take my job very seriously. Then you'd better not mention my division's accounting again to me or to anyone else. I hope you're able to locate that missing money. 
You should know something, Anthony. I'm very secure in my job here. And I'm going to continue to do what I feel is best for this company. should be white. I want nothing but white flowers. Okay, thank you, thank you. Oh, there is no way Marigot could have organized this reception. I mean, she is paralyzed by grief. Now, tomorrow after the funeral, everyone will come here. And I'm worried that Rick Summers will control this treasure that Ocean and Chris have found. I've been talking to my attorney. Evidently, it's worth a vast sum of money. Really? looking into making a case for an injunction for half. That would have been Chris's rightful share. You know, even if they lose half, it's still an enormous amount. Oh, how much could the treasure be worth, Robert? Millions. I mean, there'll be taxes, of course, and there's, there's some question as to how much the St. Martin government will take, but uh, no doubt they'll be left with an enormous amount. Our nephew is not even buried, and all we can talk about is how much money the Summers will have. No, 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 no. What I'm talking about is how this treasure will stop us from getting treatment. I can't think about this now. Let's just try to get through the funeral. Then I trust you'll do what's necessary. so beautiful, I get a pain inside. I was talking to Kyle. He's taking Chris's death badly. There's something Kyle wants. He's been talking to the rest of the family about it. Thought it'd be easier if you heard it from me. Thought I could help you understand. What is it? It's about the funeral tomorrow. Kyle doesn't want Ocean to be there. He doesn't want any of the Summers there. Ocean has to be there. He and Chris were best friends. The funeral should be part of the healing process. I agree. This is the time to finally put aside the differences. You know, the reality of the situation is we've bent over backwards for the summers and it always ends up the same. Look at what happened at your party last week. You want to borrow Ocean from the funeral. I'm just telling you what almost everyone else in the family wants. Listen to me, Joseph. No one has the right to keep Ocean Summers away from this funeral. Is it true the treasure from the Spanish Galley was a target which is over 400 years old? Have you had a chance to have the fortune to praise? Why do they call it a target of the Ghost Galleon? What happened underwater that caused your friend to drown? I don't want to talk about it. How long have you been looking before you found it? What are you playing? Hey, 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 hey. He said he doesn't want to talk about it. Now, we're on our way to a funeral, and we'd appreciate a little respect. All right? Call Rick Summers this morning? I thought you said you were going to call him. Well, Will, since this is your son's funeral, we decided. Robert, I have got a hundred things on my mind. And the last thing I want is some confrontation with you. Yeah, the the Summers are much further away than we are. They may have already left. Once they're at the church, it'll be much harder to tell them to leave. <laughs> you have always enjoyed a fight more than I.
Bryce. Will, I'm so sorry. Mr. Phillips. Our condolences. We're all still a little stunned. Well, thank you for coming, but... Under the circumstances, we feel like it would be much easier if you didn't come into the church. I'm very sorry I tried to call you at home, but you'd already left. Who thinks it would be easier? Well, we do, the Phillips family. Look, we all don't have to go inside, but I know how important it is for Ocean to be here. Rick, I would appreciate it if you just respect my family's wishes. Well, can you just let him in for a couple of minutes? That's not the issue here. But Chris would have wanted him here. I'm sorry. Mr. Phillips, Chris was my best friend. He was my son, Ocean. Come on, we don't want to force the issue. Let's go. I'm sorry, Will. This is a truly sad state of affairs. Our prayers are with Chris and with your family. to myself and to Chris. Let's go to the cemetery. They can't keep us out of the cemetery. I hope my family will come with me. I hope you'll support me in doing what's right. It's what Chris would have wanted. Okay. You don't have to go there alone. I'm with you too, Ocean. Let us pray. In your hands, O oh merciful God, we command our brother, Chris Phillips. Trust and in the resurrection at the last day, receive him into paradise with your angels and saints. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And now, let us bow our heads and add our own intentions silently. I want you out of here now! How? How? Oh,
We shouldn't be fighting. We should be setting an example for the people of St. Martin. Rick, we would all be honored if you joined us at Robert's house for the funeral reception. Yeah, Rick, uh, we'd very much like to have all of you join us. Of course. Rick, please come to our house today. For Chris's sake, because it's what he would have wanted, we'll go. I took it to a dealer a couple of days ago. He said it had a cracked gas tank. It must have been a leak. A cracked gas tank? I should have had it fixed immediately. Anthony! Anthony, you could have been killed! We better get out of the reception. We'll worry about the car later. Come on. Robert, it's so strange about Anthony's car. I, I, I just can't believe it. No, it is. It's very strange. I'm not so sure I believe that explosion was a gas leak. Something is going on with Anthony. I'm going to have to find out what it is. They humiliate us by coming here. Hush, Kaya. They come because their love for Chris is greater than their pride or anger. Grandmere, how can you be so naive? Chris's life being snatched away gives me new perspective. I want to be naive. I want to be naive enough to hope that the only grandson I have left will be smart enough to cool his anger. Hi, Rick. Thanks for coming by. Come on. I'm glad you're here. It's kind of uncomfortable. I just hope it doesn't make things worse. Chris would have hated the fighting. I know. But he would have wanted Ocean to be there. More than anything. <laughs> Dickie, I love you. Grace. It's time you and I set our two families right. Yes. We must forget about the past disagreements. It looks like bad weather. I better close my car windows. Excuse me, Christoph. I don't know what's happening to me. Suddenly my skin is all prickly and tingly. Well, there's a storm coming. It's, uh... Too many negative ions in the air. Mm, I've had this sensation before. It wasn't related to the weather. Maybe you're just overly sensitive. It's not a sensitivity, exactly. More like a weakness. Well, we've both made considerable progress overcoming our weaknesses. Still, I've found my weaknesses can become my greatest strengths.
wrong, August. You're sophisticated, witty, charming. Those are all the things I'm attracted to. I'm not just in this for a roll in the hay. But the rolls in the hay are nice perks, aren't they? <laughs> Come on, Robert, in the back seat of your wife's car at Chris's funeral reception. This is demeaning. Ah, uh, look, I know this is not the most ideal time, but I just couldn't take it anymore. I had to have you. Contessa has been watching me so closely lately. <laughs> what is this leading to? More back seats in the car, stock rooms in the office? Shh. You have to be patient, Hawks. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Come on. I brought you something to eat. Thanks. Are you sure? I'm just going to be stepping out for a few minutes. Oh, Grace, where have you been? You look like you've been standing in a wind tunnel. I've had to look after your ex-husband myself. Given the circumstances, if I were you, I'd put a lot more concentration on looking after my own husband. Hey, Mom. I'm worried about the weather. I think we should get back to the hotel. I'm gonna go see if your father's ready to leave. Okay. He was looking for you. <laughs> hey, something to drink? Yes. Right back. Nine o'clock, the greenhouse. I'll be there no matter what. She's still after you. You know that, don't you? Honey, don't worry about the Contessa. She's harmless. Come on. Club soda. The storm is still building. We have buried Chris in the ground, but this is not over. The storm is coming, and it will shake our family to the very core. Why would you say it wasn't an accident, Kyle? Because Chris was using Ocean's tank. I mean, there's something strange about that. Do we have to continue to have this conversation? Because all you're doing is making it harder on all of us, and we sure as hell don't need another battle on top of everything. Dad, I know it is painful to go through this, but if Ocean did cause Chris's death somehow, and we don't find out about it now, it's gonna haunt us for the rest of our lives. There is such a vast sum of money involved with this treasure. That kind of money can make people do strange things. Robert, the boys were best friends. They knew each other their entire lives. Well, I have known Rick Summers my entire life. I wouldn't trust him for a second. I've already been to Major Rotterdam and asked him about opening a full-fledged investigation. That's a good idea. Dad, you'd have to ask for the investigation. Well, I think it's a bad idea. Dad, we have to be sure what really went on underwater. We owe it to ourselves, and we owe it to Chris. Be glad you're still alive. If my family finds out, it's over. I won't care about anything. I won't care about your money. There will be no reason for me to live. We all have problems, Anthony. The way I see it, you were dealt a pretty good hand. Just have to learn how to play a little better. 
Well, from where I'm sitting, my hand doesn't look so great. I figured out a way that you can help your creditors in Curacao relax a little while they wait for you to find the money to pay them. How? In addition to casinos, they have a shipping company. Maybe you can switch all the Paradise Rum shipments through their company. I can't do that. We've used the same shipper for years. It's the one my grandfather made his original agreement with. I don't think you have a lot of options, Anthony. I'm not going to put all our business in the hands of unknown casino owners with questionable business ethics. You are a reckless, high-rolling gambler with non-existent business ethics. The business is in a lot more danger in your hands. Don't push me, Duncan. Because I am going to turn the tables around, and I'll make you very sorry. You tell your people in Curacao that I'm considering the feasibility of their offer. I'll get back to you. We're going to request a full state investigation into Chris's death. You think there was foul play involved, sir? I think there's a distinct possibility. Sad reflection on the Summers family. That's exactly right, Joseph. Certainly the motive was there. Summers are in desperate financial straits. Ocean felt he had to have all the treasure, all the money it would bring. It's awful when you really think about it. Yes, it's disgusting. You know, I would feel more comfortable if you were the public prosecutor assigned to this case. It would be my first case as a full-fledged prosecutor. Don't worry, Joseph. Everything we find. I could make a few calls to help ensure you'd be assigned. Thank you, sir. But I'd like to think about it. I mean, this will no doubt be a high-profile case, and I always envision shaping my career slowly. That's nonsense, Joseph. You jump right in. This case will make you a hero. Do it for the Phillips family. And you do it for yourself. Read your statement, see if it's correct. It's signed by the X marks where I've indicated. Yes. I want you to understand that we want a more thorough examination, just to put us at ease. At ease. Further investigation isn't going to put anyone at ease. We want to know more about what happened, and it's that simple. We will give you your extensive inquiry. Thank you. Keeps his copy for your records. And thank you for working with us. I trust that you will use discretion in areas that are certain to be sensitive. You mean like when I questioned the Summers family? Yes. As I told your son, I came to a conclusion upon my preliminary review of his case. And what might that be, Major Rotterdam? I concluded that the foul play had been involved. You'd never be able to pin it on anyone. Just my instincts. That's why I thought it was best to let it go. Maybe your instincts were wrong. Thank you for your time. So calm before the storm. Kind of eerie, isn't it? They say the more still the calm, the worse the hurricane. I wonder if she'll wipe us out or just go easy on us. We're going through another storm together, Rick. I wouldn't want to be with anybody else. Neither would I. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Two marriages to you and never a ring. <laughs> Three's the charm. Marry me again. I don't know, Rick. Is this the right thing? Oh, yeah. I think it is. But just wear the ring for a while, see how it feels. Okay. few days. Hopefully I can catch up with him in St. Thomas. 
That is, if we make it through this storm. Oh! My! My! I'm glad you're here with us, Mama. This is the safest place on the island. We built this new house strong enough to withstand any storm. Up here in the hills, away from the sea. The whole family belongs up here together. Oh, oh. the electricity is always the first to go. I see. Come in, Dad. about the storm. You know, you and I haven't had a lot of time to talk since you got back. Dad, it's getting close to harvest season. I know what a huge job it is managing our sugar cane all over the Caribbean. You got a lot going on, you know. And with the wedding announcement and the delay, And Chris, if you need to talk, Maxine. Thank you, Dad. Maybe not now, but, but whenever you let me know. I just need to find the strength to follow my convictions. Sweetheart, what is in your heart is, is so good. If you be true to that, I promise you, you'll, you'll set an example that this whole family will want to follow forever. Thanks. thing to be alone in this hurricane. Let's see him, big boy. I'm out. Grandpa? Anthony's gonna get rich tonight. Two tens, two fives. Kings over eights. <laughs> Gee, uh, no one else stands good. a chance. Yes, sir, aren't you a little bit overdressed? For a hurricane? No, I don't think so. If there is a disaster tonight, there will be rescue workers, maybe even the press coming. I have an image to uphold on this island, and that image does not stop for a hurricane. 
I'm going to my room. Don't worry about me, Grandma. I was wondering how long you'd sleep. You beside me? Ever. Nothing's forever. Well, we will be. 
won't let her families tear us apart. I have to go. Don't. At least not yet. Don't let them make you sad, Maxine. This has all happened so fast. Say it out loud, Maxine. Say what you're feeling. I love you, and it scares me. I love you, too. Don't be afraid. I just wish our being together didn't have to hurt so many others. As of 8 o'clock this morning, all storm watches and warnings have been lifted for St. Martin's and nearby islands. Significant damage is believed to be minimal. Cop. You say Maxine's been up at the greenhouse? I think we should go up there and check on her. Not a good idea. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Don't read into it, okay? Well, I think it's strange that she stayed up there during a hurricane. Leave it alone, Kyle. She was up there with someone, wasn't she? Ocean. She was up there with Ocean Joseph. Look, I said, leave it alone. strange bed. I'm going back to our house to see if there's anything left after the storm. What's that I smell? Coffee. And perfume. <laughs> and you. I think we might be able to take an hour for ourselves this afternoon. Go pick up a marriage license. Not today. Why not? Rick, I'm wearing your ring, and I do love you. But we've been through this twice before. We don't need to rush things. Thank you. From the reports to I, the hurricane missed us. I guess we're lucky. I'm the lucky one. Lucky you were on that cruise ship. Lucky you were on the docks to save my life. Why do I get the feeling you're the kind of man who makes his own luck? What else do you think you know about me? Only that I've never seen anyone recover quite as quickly as you. You're a man with an iron will. It's the expert care I've received. <laughs> you given any more thought to my offer? To be a private nurse? Yes, I have. And? Well, I'm tempted, Christoph. But I'm afraid how your family might react. Why wouldn't my family want you here? You're a superb nurse. Anyway, the important thing is how I react. All right, then. I accept. For a one-month trial period. Joseph, something happened last night. Something that changed. Nothing has changed. Let me make this easier for you, Maxine. I was worried about you last night when you ran out of the house into the storm. So I followed you up to the greenhouse. <sighs> no. 
Then how can you say nothing has changed? Because it hasn't. Maxine, you made a mistake. We all do from time to time, especially when we're seduced into it. But I understand. And I forgive you. Forgive me? Joseph, you're not listening. Things are different now. I hope we'll continue to be close friends and you'll always have a special place in my heart, but... No, Maxine. You're not listening to me. I love you so much. I'm willing to put all of this behind us and go on with our wedding plans. You talk as if I don't get a vote. Morning, Maxine. Joseph, everyone survived the storm? I'm still surveying the damage. The storm was nothing. I'm not giving it a second thought. You know, I was uh, hoping to see you before you left. Do you have a minute? Sure. I was just leaving. We have to talk later, Joseph. We're not finished here. What do you say to my pulling a few strings to make you prosecutor on Chris's trial? You've got to know that I appreciate the offer, sir, but forgive my cynicism if I ask, what's in it for you? A convicted criminal cannot benefit from his crime. If you find Ocean Summers guilty, he loses all claims to the treasure, and so does his father, Rick. So for the Summers, it's the end of trade winds, and it's the end of them on St. Martin. Actually, after some reflection last night, I do have some new insight into the case. You can see Ocean's desperate motivation? Very clearly. It would be a service to the island and the Phillips family. I would consider it an honor, sir. What do you think, Marty? Magnificent. Well, only half is rightfully mine. The, the rest belongs to Chris. Even half ocean makes you a very, very wealthy young man. Happy birthday, Mother. Thank you. <laughs> It looks like the uh, storm didn't treat us too badly. No. I've been told that the water will be turned back on this afternoon. Is there anything I can get you? You might go over to Trade Winds and see if they have a copy of the New York Times. Just the paper? Yes, I need to distract myself with news from the world at large. What's wrong, Mom? I think your father's having an affair. What makes you think that? A wife just knows when her husband's having an affair, Decur. I want to know who she is. Knowing your enemies at least half the battle. Don't worry. They're all properly executed. Search and see, Chef, the treasure. You surely move fast. Material evidence, Rotterdam. In case you've forgotten, my cousin died recovering it. You're doing this because he's your cousin or because he's Maxine's brother? You're out of line, Rotterdam. Oh, I'm sorry. Just that I saw your hot little fiance. Just do your job, Rotterdam. And I'll do mine. After he sees the gold and the silver and the rest of the spoils, we take it directly to the property room. Yes, sir.
parking ticket? No, no, no. It's a mash note from one of my many admirers. What's going on with you? Nothing's going on. I'm fine. You don't seem fine. Just leave it alone, okay? Anthony, listen, we've known each other since we were kids. If you're in some sort of trouble or if you need Ocean. Help... I'm all right, honest. Okay. Just know the offer's good any time. Ocean. A word of warning, and you didn't hear this from me. Rotterdam's inside. He's got a search and seizure order for the treasure. Thanks. You got a hell of a lot of nerve coming over here. You see, all tidy, legal like. You know, the Latarga treasure was recovered by my son. And the dead Phillips boy. I'm certain you won't mind if I call my attorney. Go, go, call away. I got time. I'll do that. Apparently, Prosecutor Joe Gabetti has already informed my attorney, who tells me I have to turn everything over to you. Let's go. Is it in a safe place? It's in my office. Nothing better be missing from that safe. The search and seizures for the whole treasure, Mr. Summers. So I understand. So it better all be there. Or what? You people think you own this island, don't you? If you have a point, make it. I don't like you, Summers. I'd love nothing more than to nail both you and your son. So if you want to go ahead and do something stupid, be my guest. It'll make my job all that much more enjoyable. Help yourself. Some flowers has just come for you, Mrs. Phillips. Oh, put them over here. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Layla. Oh. Robert Dury. Didn't even bother to send flowers. Happy birthday and many more. Best wishes. Rick Summers. May I speak to Mr. Summers, please? Would you tell... On second thought, does Mr. Summers still take his lunch in his room? He does. Thank you. Following you. Our favorite place. Yes. If you ever can't find me anywhere else, this is where I'll be. I talked to Joseph. He knows about us. What do you mean? He followed me up to the greenhouse last night. He saw us together. He's acting like it doesn't matter, as if it doesn't change anything. But it does. Doesn't it? You know the answer to that. I won't let him hurt you, Maxine.
Somehow, Ocean, it's not me I'm worried about. Signed, sealed, and delivered. You believe all this stuff? It must be worth millions. More than likely, not worth Chris's life. Nothing's worth that. The next step is a search and seizure of Ocean Summer's equipment. If I can show that there was something wrong with that tank, that it had somehow been tampered with, then I've got a case. Premeditated murder. First degree, if you're sharp enough to pull it off. I'll show you razor sharp. No, fine, fine. Provided all the paperwork's executed, I'll be by with a check to assume Tradewind's mortgage at 8.30 tomorrow morning. And I thank you. Goodbye. Well, we're feeling a little cocky this morning, aren't we? Why not? I buy the mortgage, Rick defaults, and the hotel is mine, finally. And then? Then I'm free. Mm -hmm. Of your wife? Of many, many things, my dear August, but the Contessa? That would be a bit more difficult, but not impossible. Contessa must be made to feel that she is leaving me. Otherwise, we will both be faced with a formidable enemy. You say this with admiration. Admiration, yes. Respect, yes, but not with passion. That I reserve for you. You better go lock the door. That's a good idea. You wanted... Anthony, excuse me. Oh, no. Anthony. Anthony, wait! It's not what you think. You have no idea what I think. You're, uh... Memo cited discrepancies in my accounting of Paradise Rum profits. August still running to you with that bit of information? Well, I'm glad she did come to me. It's a very serious problem. I told her I would handle it. Under the circumstances, I should fire her. But I don't suppose you'd approve it, would you? August is not the issue here. Your financial mismanagement is. The problems in my division are easy to fix, Dad. But what about you and August? Well, it's none of your business, is it? Kristoff put me in charge of the European division, Dad. So unless you're willing for Grandpa to find out about your uh, executive office couch, I suggest you stay out of my way. Front desk, could you inform Mr. Summers that an important package is awaiting his attention in his room? Thank you. I gave Mr. Summers an even trade on this ring, Grace. It was a good deal. Oh, I'm sure it was, Pierre. But now I'd like to buy back Rick's watch. Grace Summers Real Estate, I'm calling for Rick Summers. Could you have Mrs. Summers meet him in his hotel room in about half an hour? Yes, half an hour. Thank you.
Well. Oh. Well, thanks for the message, Allison. But no, don't tell Mr. Summers I'm coming. I'll surprise him. Dad, it's not like I did anything wrong. I mean, it's rightfully part of my half of the treasure, right? Ocean, taking that piece was illegal. Now, the situation is already tense. Now, I'm afraid that somebody is going to find out that you sold it, and I don't want to give the police an excuse to come after you. Well, then we just have to make sure that no one finds out about that it. That is not the solution. Dad, the money will keep you afloat at least for a while. Come on, what'd you expect me to do? Sit by and watch the family business sink into the sea? Son, as much as trade winds means to me, it isn't worth a damn compared to how I feel about you. Now, I'm not gonna have you jeopardizing your future just to save us. Excuse me, Mr. Summers, but we just received a second call about that package in your room. Something about being perishable? Close the door behind you. What you see is for your eyes only. Would it be out of line to ask what you're doing here? Surprised, but not disappointed. <laughs> A night. No. <laughs> I remember a time. Long in the past. At the risk of repeating myself, what are you doing here? I just came to thank you for the lovely flowers. You were the only one who remembered my birthday. <sighs> Leticia, the hotel sent the flowers. They sent them automatically all our business associates. I must look ridiculous. No. Is that all I am to you, Richard? A business associate? No, no. Look, we were much more once. We could be again. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't tempted. <laughs> no buts. Tisha. I'm in love with Grace. And I'm married to Robert Keldemarge. <laughs> Stop. Listen to me. <laughs> I'm going to marry Grace again. I'll throw her a shower. <laughs> I don't think that's such a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> It's not what it Not how it looks? No. Please, Rick, not that old tired line. Just give me five minutes to explain. Shall I order drinks for three? Five minutes, five years. What difference does it make? You always have an excuse, but you never change. Damn you, Rick! Damn you both to hell! Grace, wait a minute! Will you come back here a second, please? Just make that champagne for one. Pretty soon. Mom? Mom, what is it? What happened? Make sure your father gets this. Grace. Grace, honey, please. Will you stop this? Will you talk to me for a second? Why are you doing this? What happened this time? It wasn't even my fault. Why should I expect your mother to believe me? Bye. Well, hello. This is a surprise. They told me you would be back soon, so I decided to wait. I think it's important that we finish our discussion. I don't think we need to finish it now. 
I want you to be clear on where I stand. Things have changed between us. You told me that. I know that you're going through kind of a stage right now. I know it won't be long before you decide to come back to me and you'll be my wife. That's why I'd rather not even discuss it. Joseph, this is no stage. I'm going to give you a little space, Maxine. I know that that's healthy. I'm not saying that it's easy for me, but I know that you'll love me even more because I've done it. I have to get back to work on your brother's case. We don't need to talk anymore, Maxine. I understand you. I think better than you understand yourself. Nothing. Watch this. All right. Are we even now? Stay away from my family. Oh, if I recall correctly, family doesn't include ex-husbands. I swear, I'll go straight to Robert and I'll tell him... What? What? That you caught Rick and me together in a hotel room? Be my guest. How did Robert ever end up with trash like you anyway? Mama. Have we forgotten under what cloud you first arrived on this island? Or is all that black hair dye caused amnesia? You try a stunt like that again, and it won't just be your car with a little front end damage. I'm calling my lawyer! Bitch! Maxine. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Got a lot on my mind. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Maxine, are you ever going to work out your problems with Joseph? I don't know, Mama. Joseph's changed. He's different somehow. Would you leave Joseph for Ocean Summers? When you married Dad, there was a lot of controversy. You paved the way, an island girl marrying into the leading family? Maxine, it was different. You and Dad stood up for what you knew was right, and soon everyone accepted the two of you together. But there was never any danger with your father. Ocean Summers is dangerous. And I am frightened for you, Maxine. Don't worry, Mama. You look surprised, Anthony. How did you know I was here? Your secretary was very helpful. Something about lunch with your half-brother Joseph. What do you want? The new contracts. Sign on the dotted line and you bought some time with my casino associates. My signature's not good enough. My father has to countersign all contracts involving this kind of money. I'll have to figure out a way to get him to sign it. If I were you, I'd find a way. Waiter. Yes, I know that. Damn it, I want a search and seizure of Ocean Summer's equipment, and I want it now. Just look into it and get back to me. I'm sorry I'm late. It's okay. Uh, why do you want to get hold of Ocean's equipment? Chris died using Ocean's tank, remember? Right. You, uh, think the tank was damaged? Maybe on purpose. You think, uh, Ocean tampered with the tank? If the lab turns up what I'm looking for, I'll make a case that Ocean either rigged that tank himself, or he was smart enough to hire an expert to do it for him. Hired someone? 
I don't think so. You didn't ask me to lunch to talk about the mechanics of my investigation. Come on. Something's wrong. <sighs> oh, Joseph. Yes. Great. No, you have it sent over to my office right away. Yes. I will be there shortly. Right, thanks. Damn treasure. Chris. I've got forensics standing by to go over Ocean's tank, his air regulator, and diving computer the minute you pick it up. What about the Summers kid himself? Is it time to ask a few questions on the record? Oh, yes, it's time. Taking the afternoon off? Yeah, looks like we both are. I'm not comfortable going home right now. I'm trying to avoid my father. You, uh, care to join me in a tranquilizing dose of liquid anesthetic? Isn't it a little early for that? Boy's gotta have a hobby. Why don't you come in for a swim? Maxine, what's the uh, story with you and Ocean? No story, Anthony. I love him. What about Ocean? Does he love you? Yes. Oh, Maxine, you don't know what you're doing. What you're letting yourself in for, and now it's just... And now what? Nothing, nothing. Forget it. Oh, come on, Anthony, out with it. You know you're the only one in the family I can count on to tell me the truth. Don't do this to me. Maxine, your uh, father filed a formal complaint. He's asking for a full investigation into Chris's death. Joseph is the prosecutor in charge, and he's building a case against Ocean. Oh. The family's gonna try to nail him. God help him if he's innocent. Just a list of everything we took, saying it's yours, so you can get it back someday. That it? Not by a long shot. I've got a few questions for you. Which I don't have to answer without a lawyer. Maybe that's the way it works off the island, boy. But down here? It works pretty much the same. Do you have a warrant for my son's arrest? No? Then I suggest you get the hell off of my property. That's the way you want to play it? To your funeral. Hello. Recognize the voice, don't you? How did you get this number, Dave? Hey, I need to split the island, but I need some money. I want some money, Anthony. <laughs> Take the number. Hey, hold on, cowboy. Your cousin is dead. I know you don't want me to start talking. So what do you say to one last contribution to Dave's pension plan? Now, and you know how to get it to me.
So, Ocean Summers is too high and mighty to answer a few informal questions without his lawyer. If it's hardball he wants to play, he's going to have to learn that I'm the one holding the bat. I could find an excuse to pick him up. I don't need an excuse. Obstructing justice, sufficient evidence to suggest probable cause, refusal to cooperate, significant flight risk, and this. <laughs> I'll be damned. Traces of high concentration of carbon monoxide in Ocean's tank. According to the lab, I'll get the warrant. You pick up Summers. My pleasure. What if he gives me trouble? Major, you're a cop. Do what you have to do to bring him in. You can't be serious. An investigation into a possible murder is a very serious thing, Miss Summers. Where's your brother? I'll call my father. He'll know where he is. Dad? Hi, it's Ellen. Ellen, it's Ocean. Dad, listen. Major Rotterdam is here at the front desk. He has a warrant for Ocean's arrest. He's trying to find Ocean. Don't make this any harder than it has to be for you or your brother. Find him. Come in. <sighs> you look beautiful. Flattery before the fall. You know, when I was in high school, all the guys used to kid me about having a mom who was so young and incredible looking. I think you uh, spoiled me for any other woman. What would I do without you? I don't say that. Could be gone someday. And I'd die. No, Mom. You are a survivor. Mrs. Phillips, is Maxine home? No. Please, Mrs. Phillips, I, I need to see her. It's important. I'm sorry. She is not here. Mrs. Phillips, I know you're in a lot of pain right now. And maybe I'm out of line by bringing this up, but I love Chris, too. And you've got to know I'd never do anything to hurt him. But he did get hurt, didn't he? And words can never change that. Feeling of danger, the same as when Chris died. Get a hold of Major Rotterdam right now. Tell him Ocean Summers is heading west on Point Blanche Road. Got a warrant for Ocean's arrest. He's just here looking for Maxine. Where is she? I don't know. <laughs> this is car six. I just spotted Ocean Summers heading north on the Bay Road. I'm heading after him.
checking today, sir? Two. One way to uh, Antigua, please. The police lost him heading north on Bay Road. What's up, dude? The old fort. I bet anything that's where Ocean is going. And I have a funny feeling Maxine is there, too. Well, let's go. Any word? No. Police have put it out in APB. Not called everywhere. Nobody knows where he is. Listen to me, I love you. Get him! Arrest him! <laughs> don't listen to them, Maxine. Whatever they tell you, don't listen. You're under arrest. Come with me. Let him Let's go! go. Let Maxine! Him Maxine! Watch it! Watch Down. it! I know what you're doing, Joseph. And you won't get away with it. I won't let you.
papers for the autopsy to proceed in Curacao. A forensic pathologist is there waiting and ready. Aren't you running a risk having a second autopsy done on the kid? This new doctor could rule the death an accident just like the local guy did. The scuba diving tank had carbon monoxide in it. This is no accident. Very sorry, Mr. and Mrs. Summers, but according to the law, only the prosecutor can approve visitors. Danny, are you telling us we can't visit our own son? Look, we're going in there to see our son, approval or not. Is there a problem here? Yeah, there's a lot of problems here. We'd like to see our son. Danny. Go right on in and see him. Enjoy the visit. Thank you. Do you have 10 minutes? Normally, with a default such as Rick Summers' trade wins loan, we'd offer the mortgage publicly to the highest bidder. We appreciate you allowing us to assume this mortgage without any public announcement. Obviously, the business your family and Paradise Rum has brought to this bank is significant. We try to accommodate wherever we can. You will be rewarded. You can count on that. All I want is the check, and the trade win hotel will be yours. This is a big moment. My heart is pounding. Wasn't, wasn't the hotel originally built on Phillips' land? Yeah, we've always felt that the Summers swindled the land from us. <laughs> well, now it's finally reverting back to its rightful owner. Yes. We have great plans for trade winds. Expansion, renovation, and of course we'll change the name to Paradise Inn. Well, why don't you and the Contessa get started signing the documents while I confirm the funds? Just a formality. Mm. Very good. Robert, I think we've got a problem. I just want to confirm what I'm showing on the screen. Please be patient. I'll be right back. I brought you a change of clothes. They say they'll give them to you after inspection. Thanks. I've uh, made arrangements for you to be represented by Junior Hall. Uh, he's doing some preliminary background work on your case right now. Junior Hall? I've never heard of him. Well, he's, he's young. Uh, he's new. <sighs> Come on, what's going on? It seems that the power and influence of the Phillips name has caused all the law firms with prestige on the island to be unavailable. This guy Jr. ever try a case in court before? Not in criminal court, but he seems like a good guy. And he's not scared off by the Phillips. I guess that's a good sign. Damn it. Damn it. This is all my fault. Ocean is being framed. He is being set up so that Robert Phillips can get his hands on the hotel. Because a convicted murderer can't profit from his crime. Exactly. The treasure reverts to the government and we lose trade wins. That's really what this is all about. I'm here to see Ocean. His parents are in with him right I'll now. Oh, wait. There's no point, Maxine. You can't. 
can't see him. I have a right to. Now, Maxine, we both know that the law is the law. And as the prosecutor, I'm bound to uphold it. The law doesn't say you can keep me from seeing Osha. The law says that I must protect the integrity of the prosecution's case. Joseph, let me see him. Don't tell me how to do my job. I'm not going to let Ocean interfere with this investigation. That's why he is locked up. He's locked up, Joseph. So he won't interfere with me. We're going to beat this Ocean. What? It's just so good to see the two of you together, standing side by side. Sometimes it takes a crisis to make you realize what's really important in life. Sorry, Ocean. Time's up. What is it? What's wrong? To put it bluntly, there isn't enough money in any of your accounts to cover the check. Robert, I haven't been doing that kind of shopping. Well, that can't be. I mean, obviously, there's some kind of a mistake. <laughs> there isn't enough in your personal portfolio or in Paradise Rum's liquid asset accounts. The record shows withdrawals of almost $2 million in the past 10 months. Where, where is all this money gone, then? To a variety of places. But all the checks were signed by Anthony Phillips. Anthony. Anthony! Robert, wait! Robert, please, he's just a boy. Robert, be reasonable, let's think this through. Please, you know how your temper runs out of control. <sighs> Robert, just calm down. The moment we ask Anthony about this, he'll be able to explain. There is nothing to explain. He's stolen our money. No, Robert. His clothes are gone. Looks like he's left. I can't believe Joseph wouldn't let you see Ocean either. Your own brother. He's setting him up, Maxine. Tank tampering. Ocean always had his scuba tank filled at Simpson Bay Dive Shop. Do you think we should go over there? I think it's worth a shot. Look, I already told you I spoke to the police. Well, what harm is there in talking to us? Unless you have something to hide. You want to know what I told that charming Major Rotterdam? We want to know everything. Look. The dive shop was broken into, okay? But it was strange because nothing was taken. That is it. So do you think someone broke in to tamper with Ocean's tank? But who and why? Listen, the police don't seem to be too interested in my hunches, okay? But there's this creepy guy always hanging around the dive shop. He has a slick cigarette boat. His name's Dave. If he's not here, he's calling from bar to bar and gone cats. But why would this guy want to sabotage Ocean's tank? He's the kind that would do anything for a buck. So do you think someone paid him to tamper with Ocean's tank? Look, it doesn't prove anything, I guess, OK? But I have seen Dave in deep and heavy conversations with that red-haired, straight-laced boy. There was a picture of him in last week's St. Martin Guardian at some fancy party with his mother, the Contessa. What do you want? I'm trying to figure out what kind of man would murder his best friend over money. 
Maybe you'd be better off wondering what kind of man would frame his ex frame. Maxine will come back to me. We'll be married. You talked to her about that lately? Think she's gonna wait around 10 years? 20? A lifetime? If that's the case, the only way you can win is by misusing the law to keep us apart. Face it, Ocean. It's over. You've lost. It's not over yet, Joseph. Those are big words for a boy who's waiting behind bars while the evidence stacks up against him. Hi, my name is Junior Hall. I'm here to see Rick Summers. Hi, Junior. Thank you for coming by after hours. Not a problem, Mr. Summers. Junior, this is my daughter, Ellen. Oh, Hi. pleasure Hi. to meet you. Uh, Ellen was speaking with the woman... Please, sit down. Oh, thank you. No, Ellen was speaking with the woman who runs a dive shop near where Ocean filled his tank. There's this guy, Dave, who's been hanging around the dive shop. Huh. Dan, you say his name is? Dave. D-A-V-E. -D -E. Yeah, apparently, he has one of those big cigarette boats. He keeps moored near the shop. Yes, I know that type of boat. Very expensive. A, a favorite with drug smugglers. Yeah, that's right. So the girl who runs the shop there, Sarah? Sarah? Sarah, right. Um, she said that she saw Dave talking with Anthony Phillips. Anthony Phillips? Now, this Dave character doesn't seem like the kind of guy that Anthony would have anything to do with, unless, of course, he needed him for something. Uh, well, to do his dirty work for him. Exactly. Okay, well, let me do some digging on both Dan and Anthony Phillips. I need to talk to you right now. I'm sorry, Leticia, but I'm very busy. I'm not going to be free for quite some time. Whatever you're doing can wait. Let's go. This better be good. Believe me, there's nothing good about it. I had to stop by Paradise Rum this morning, and as I'm walking through the lobby, I hear this boy asking insinuating questions about Anthony. As it turns out, he's some green lawyer working for you. He's defending Ocean. Then what is he doing asking questions about Anthony? It's called investigating. We have to check out all the angles. You leave Anthony alone, do you hear me? He's under enough pressure without you adding to it. A pressure? Now, what pressure could Anthony possibly have? He's the young star of Paradise Rum. Yes. Anthony's been blessed with many gifts, but he's also been cursed with a predilection for vice and temptation. And now he's left the island, and I'm worried sick. He's left the island. Yes, Robert's driven him away. He expects him to be perfect. He won't tolerate even the slightest little trip up. Now he's ready to disown him. And on top of that, he doesn't need your lawyer asking questions. Well, if Anthony's got nothing to hide, what's the harm of a few questions? The point is, Anthony does have things to hide. But I tell you, he had nothing to do with Chris's death. Well, I certainly hope not, Leticia. But I have to be sure. And the fact that Anthony has left St. Martin makes me even more suspicious. Anthony didn't leave over Ocean's trial. He left because he no longer had any reason to stay. Mother Lion and her cub. Boy, 20 some odd years hasn't changed you one bit, has it? But I'll tell you something, Leticia. Anthony is an adult now. And you can't protect him forever. Not from what he might have done or from his own father. That's just it. I have to protect Anthony. Because Robert is not his father. You are. You know what? You are really good. Oh, I assure you, Richard. Our Anthony was born only eight months after I I'm married So him. he was premature. Uh, nearly nine pounds, please. Richard, even you must have known better. You spring this on me after all these years and expect me to believe it? This is just another one of your schemes to get something you want. What I want now and the only thing I want is my son back. I came to you in the mistaken belief that as Anthony's father you would want to help. There's no way you can be sure if I'm Anthony's father. I'm his mother. 
Oh, Anthony is our son. He is my heir and your weaknesses. For me? Yes, sir. The trail wasn't very difficult to follow. Anthony's been gambling. So he's dabbling at the casino? I'm not dabbling, sir. Baccarat High Roller Room at the Reef Club is his favorite spot. Recently, he's been on a losing streak. Sir, serious losing streak. Gee, it's not just with gambling. He's been skimming money out of our Paradise Rum accounts. Do you have any idea where he might be right now? I don't have a clue. All I can tell you is there are a lot of people who would like to know. Oh, the fake and go left. Good move. I learned that move from you in grade school. <laughs> you were the last person I'd expect to see in here. I'll be in the back if you need me. Good morning, Ocean. I'm Junior Hall, your attorney. Good to meet you. Yeah, well, uh, let's, uh... So you're not afraid to buck the Phillips, huh? I don't like seeing big guys like that throwing their weight around, using their wealth and power to turn the law to their advantage. Whatever your reasons for taking my case, thanks. Okay. Ah, uh, well, it's, it's like this. With a recent revelation regarding the tampering of the tank, it's looking more and more like a premeditated act. A uh, first-degree murder is what they'll call it in court. But I was the target. Well, I'm, I'm following a couple of leads. Do you know anything about a guy named... a guy named Dave with a cigarette boat? Yeah, when Chris and I went diving, he tried to ram us at about 40 miles an hour. Well, uh... It seems your boat friend has been hanging around Anthony Phillips. Well, I've known Anthony since we were kids. But I've had nothing to do with him lately, but I'd suspect other people in the Phillips family before him. Well, there, there may be nothing to this Anthony lead, but uh, I, I don't have much in this case. Uh, but I, I'm pulling on every thread I can find. Something better happen fast, or I'll be behind bars for a long time. Looks like we won't be able to get Anthony's side of the story anytime soon. He's gone. Gone? For how long? I'm not sure. When I asked the Contessa, she wouldn't talk about it. I could tell she was worried about him, but I don't think she knows where he is or when he's coming back. So much for his presumed innocence. I just can't believe Anthony would ever hurt Chris Roche. Well, we just have to find this Dave guy. Maybe he can tell us something. Sarah said it hangs out of grown cars. some time in the past? Ah, oh, she's just looking at pictures of the kids. Ocean's winning soccer team. Yes. I always get sentimental when I look at these pictures. Now I remember Anthony was on the team, too. That's right. Yeah, it seemed that back then the differences between the Summers and the Phillips weren't so great. Ocean is going to be okay. I feel like I'm, I'm just losing it. I know something we can do. What? Ocean needs to know his family is behind him. United and together, 100%. Yeah. Do you still have the ring? Yeah. Thank 
carry it around in my pocket. Just looking for the chance to put it on your finger. Yeah, I know the guy. You might have missed him, though. He told me he's leaving the island this afternoon. Thanks. Looks like you're in a hurry. Who are you? Ellen Summers, Ocean Sister. And I'm his friend. Well, I'm happy for both of you ladies, but I got to split. So what do you know about carbon monoxide and Ocean's tank? I guess you know a lot about it. That's why you're in such a hurry to get out of it. I'll tell you one thing. I don't know nearly as much as Anthony Phillips. Adios, muchacho. Hey, wait a minute. We need to talk to you. Get off my boat before oh. I hurt you, honey. Don't touch her. Hey, my brother has been accused of murder. You are not leaving this island until you testify. Oh. Go to touch you her. You Hired him? I think you're kidding yourself. We were naive to think we could make a difference by investigating this ourselves. What choice do we have? I mean, it's apparent that your family is out to frame my brother for murder. I can't help thinking this is my fault. If I had broken the engagement with Joseph, he wouldn't be out to get Ocean. I just wish there was some way to convince Joseph to back off. Time for your pills. Can there be anything more boring than an old man and his pills? Not old, and you're never, ever boring. My little angel, Lisa. <laughs> I understand the pathologist in Curacao has completed his report. We need to make some kind of arrangements to get Chris's body returned. Uh, let me handle that, sir. I think it will be easier for all concerned. How long before this whole mess is over with? A few days. The judge will make everything fine. Excuse me. I've lost my appetite. Maxine asked me to read the cards, and it was very clear. The signs of danger were all there. But not for Chris. For Ocean's death. But it was my son who died, Mama, not Ocean. Yes, it was. And perhaps because of some kind of tragic, tragic mistake. I'm sorry to interrupt. Nonsense, my dear August. Uh, join us. No, I'm sorry, I can't. Um, Robert, I'm sorry, there seems to be a problem at the office. Do you have a minute? Well, of course. Use my study if you like, Robert. Excuse us, uh, August. Where's Anthony? Shouldn't he be here? I haven't seen him in days. She might suspect something. This isn't about us, Robert. Oh, yeah? Ocean's lawyer was talking to some of our employees about our accounts. 
Gotch Anthony has access to? Did he find anything out? I don't think so, but I can't say for sure. Okay, I'll take care of it. Is there anything I can do? Oh, babe, what a mess. And I can't think Anthony had anything to do with Chris's death. What do you think? Is there a chance Anthony could have been involved? And I'd like to say no, but I don't know anymore, August. I trusted Anthony more than I trust myself. He was everything to me. I was so furious when I found out he'd taken all the money. And I might lose trade window because of it, but... It just hurts, August. I think this board meeting's adjourned, don't you? This is where we have a seat. No, Robert. I can't think of any reason to have a scene. Good. Let's handle this like adults, then. Of course. One does have to keep up appearances, doesn't one? Even if only for your father. What do you want? Now we're getting somewhere. I want you to fix everything for Anthony. Don't fix the books at Paradise Run? Pay off his gambling debt? Gambling debts? Well, you didn't know about the gambling. That's how all his money problems started. I don't care how it started. I want you to wipe the slate clean. Welcome him back with open arms? Yes. I can't even bring myself to tell Will and Kristoff that Anthony drained our cash accounts. I want my son back. He betrayed us. You're a fine one to talk. Oh, Contessa, please spare me the tears. It's not as if you haven't had your own indiscretions. I have never been unfaithful. In your fashion. Face it, darling. We're perfect for each other. Then why has it come to this? What would Kristoff think of it? He'd be furious, wouldn't he? Leave my father out of this. I will, Robert, gladly. All you have to do is forgive Anthony and forget about August. Are you sure you want to play this game? Try me. Come along, dear. Our dinner's getting cold. And we've got to keep something warm. you yeah mom i just called to say i'm fine don't worry about me don't worry anthony that's like asking the monk not to pray all i do is worry about you day and night where are you sweetheart i'm sorry mom i can't tell you just called to say i'm fine anthony 
about you lately. I wanted to talk to you. I couldn't wait any longer. You've been avoiding me. You think I'm pressing this case against Ocean because... because of the two of you. Aren't you? No, Max. Ocean killed Chris. And he's got to pay. How do you know, Joseph? Look, Maxine, I can't explain the details to you right now. But believe me, Chris's death was no accident. It was murder. The case against Ocean is circumstantial. With the combined evidence and witnesses I intend to introduce, I can shape a good case. What if you didn't believe Ocean was guilty, Joseph? What if you didn't shape a good case? Then, like you say, the case would be more circumstantial. Ocean would get off? Probably, but I, I think I know that Ocean is innocent, Joseph. If you believe me, you won't be sorry. If you agree not to push the case against Ocean, I'll make you happy. I promise. accommodations of trade winds will be closed in a week. It looks like that might happen. It's not going to happen. You know something I don't know? Joseph to let you in to see me. It was his idea. I have something to tell you, Ocean. I've decided to marry Joseph. You're kidding, right? No, this is serious. You can't marry him. You don't love yes, him. I do. I love him very much. And we're going to be married tomorrow afternoon. Why are you doing this? It's what I'm going to do. It's the right thing. Maxine, no! able to put all this gloom behind us. I didn't think it was such a sure thing that the Summers boy was guilty. That's right, Carl. I don't know what makes you so certain of Ocean's guilt. He poisoned his tank, and he talked Chris into using it. From what I understand, there isn't enough evidence to convict him. I'm convinced he'll go free. But how can... Uh, hello, everyone. Hello. Maxine, where have you been? Uh, Marigold, Maxine and I needed to talk. Is everything OK? Yes, Dad. And this time, I have an announcement to make. Joseph and I are getting married. Tomorrow afternoon on the beach.
need to talk to Joseph. He said he's not coming in. He's getting married today. Where? I don't know. In fact, everyone is acting like it's some big secret. Yes. Well, I thank you for tracing the call, but considering how long it took, I'll pass. Sarcasm so early in the morning? Good <laughs> morning. <laughs> I've got some news. So do I. Maxine and I are... I've discovered that Anthony is on Antigua at the Ambassador Hotel. You're not listening to me. My first instinct, of course, is to go and bring him back. Anthony, Anthony, Anthony. Do you have any idea how hard it's been trying to be your son? Trying to get your attention, your love? When all you ever do is think of Anthony? That's not true. Yeah, but it is. Maxine and I are getting married this afternoon on Bay Rouge below the main house. If it doesn't interfere with your schedule, I'd like it if you would attend. I thought you wanted me to marry Joseph. You know I do, but not now, not like this. Like what? It's going to be a lovely family ceremony on the beach. No, no, this doesn't feel right. It's as if someone is holding a shotgun, making you do something that you don't want to do. I know what I'm doing. The wedding is as I want it. What is a week or two or even a month? Wait and be sure you are ready. Don't you understand? I don't want to wait. I can't. I just want the best for you, Shereen. And I sense something is wrong. I love you so much. I know, Mama. <laughs> I love you, too. Joseph and I want to be married right away, Mama. It's the best thing. Please, try to understand. Your father received notification from the bank today. They're planning for the hotel to go to public auction in 10 days. I can't believe it's come to this. Honey, we have to believe that Ocean will be acquitted. His share of the treasure will come back to him and everything will turn around. <laughs> Leticia, I want you to tell me where Anthony is. <laughs> what a fool I am. Here I thought you'd invited me to lunch today because you'd accepted the fact that Anthony is your son. If Anthony is innocent, then he needs to testify and clear his name. Anthony wasn't the one diving with Chris that day, He Richard. could have caused the accident without being in the water. All you really want to do is throw one son to the wolves in order to save the other. Please, just tell me where he is. I were sure that Anthony was my son. I wouldn't do it any differently. I would still try to find him and convince him to stop running away from his problems. Now, if he's innocent, then he needs to tell the court what he knows so that Ocean will be punished for something he didn't do. Richard, he is our son. Tell me where he is. I won't tell you. I'll take you there myself. Meet me tomorrow morning at the American Airlines ticket counter at 10 o'clock. was a man I deeply loved, a man I could not marry. General Charles de Gaulle? Mm. He gave this necklace to me so that no matter which direction my life would take, I would always remember what we had. Wear this when you take your vows, Maxine. So you, too, will never forget the man you truly love. You want 
to marry him and spend the rest of your life with him? Yes, Daddy, I really want to marry him. You look beautiful. If anybody finds out, I'm not only out of a job, but behind bars with you! Come on, Denny, you know I don't belong in here. You've got to help me fight back! We have to get to the beach and be back in half an hour before the guard change. We can't risk any longer. We'll make it in time. This means a lot to me, Danny. Beloved, we are gathered here together and in the sight of God to join together these two in the Lord's most sacred sacrament of marriage. If anyone should have cause to say why Maxine and Joseph should not be united in holy matrimony, please speak now or forever hold your peace. Do you take Maxine to be your wife, to love and cherish her, to respect and honor her, as long as you both shall live? I do. Maxine, do you take Joseph to be your husband, to love and cherish him, to respect and honor him, as long as you both shall live? I do. Time's up, Ocean. I now pronounce you husband and wife.
Bruises on the deceased's neck and arms indicate an underwater struggle. The deceased was first struck with a large block of coral. He died shortly thereafter. He bumped his head on the side of the reef. I did <laughs> Whether you killed him or not doesn't matter. If there's probable cause, they will convict you. <laughs> the judge will see the truth. No, he will just add up the facts. Even that pretty little Phillips girl you're always looking at, she knows you're a gunner. You don't know what you're talking about! They're in the midst of their, their sweet wedding night right now. You'll have many years of lonely nights to think about them together. <laughs> Is this where I carry you over the threshold? I got this thing. I'm gonna trip on this train. Right after this trial, we are gonna take that honeymoon that we have always dreamed of. And we'll come back, find a great little house to live in all to ourselves. Excuse me, I'll be back in a few minutes. Are you okay? Yes, I'm fine. I, ju I just need a few minutes. Maxine, are you crying? I... I, I just... I just need to go slowly. It's okay, Maxie. We'll go slowly. We have the rest of our lives. We, we don't have to rush into anything tonight. I needed to be alone. Oh. Honey, uh, I think that Anthony Phillips had something to do with Ocean's tank being sabotaged. You told me nobody knows where Anthony is. Well, the Contessa, rather Leticia, knows. Oh. Yeah, she said she's willing to take me to him. What else is she willing to do? I saw the two of you having lunch together yesterday. Made me remember. Made me feel the old scars. I'm sorry, honey. I, I had to see her. I, I knew she could help me find Anthony. She also told me something else I think we need to talk about. What's that? Well, she said at the end of our affair 25 years ago, when she got pregnant, Anthony's my son. And do you believe her? No, of course not. It's just the, the timing makes sense. Can't you see what she is doing? Yes, yes. Yes, of course I can. But Anthony's testimony could clear Ocean. And the only way I'm going to get to talk to him is if I go with her. I mean, she won't tell me where he is. She insists on taking me to him. 
Naturally. She, she wants me to meet her at the airport this morning. But if I do this, I want you to go with me. Thank you. You're welcome, Mrs. Gabetti. I can't help wondering if your tears last night had something to do with ocean. I'm wondering just how strong your feelings for him still are. I just want Ocean to have a fair trial. Well, that's all, a fair trial, nothing more? Nothing more. Does a fair trial come before a happy marriage? I think knowing my husband has conducted a fair trial will make for a happy marriage. I don't want to worry about my wife's feelings for another man. You show me your integrity, and I'll show you my devotion. I want this marriage to work, Maxine. Love you. It's going to work. We'll both do what it takes to make it work. Honey, I want to grab a New York Times. Okay, I'll wait for you. You clear today, Mom? Yeah. Yeah, for the whole day. You have a seat? Americans like 16 to 7, it's now ready to go. Please have your body back to the place. Thank you. Rick, sweet dog, here I am. Hello, Leticia. Oh, you're a shitty. So where's our mystery destination today? Hmm. Must not be too far since you don't have any traveling trunks. Grace is here. Try to ask her to come. Hello, Contessa. Rick, dear, I don't think you quite understand. I'm not planning on traveling with Grace. I'm sorry, it's just Dickie and me today. No, Contessa. Dickie, me, and you as the third wheel. I think I'd feel more comfortable if she came along. The point is, Anthony would be put off by her presence, and I'm not going to subject him to it. I'm sorry, I can't take you to Anthony with your ex-wife in tow. I just hold on a second. Rick, it's okay. Go without me. Honey, I don't want to do that. How gallant. But don't bother Grace. None of us are going anywhere. Wait a second, no, Leticia. it's settled. We are going to leave Anthony in peace. And Richard, spare me any more invitations for intimate lunches. Now, we have a deal. Come Well, it'll be easier now that the Contessa knows about us. No, August, it won't be easier. Well, what are you saying? Things are going to change between us? I need to think everything through. I don't think I like the way that sounds. Oh, Dan. I was just passing through, and I thought I'd have a word with you. I was just leaving. <clears throat> nice to see you, Mr. Phillips. August, you've met Lisa Topping. Yes. Hello. Hello, Robert. What, uh, what is it, Dan? Robert, I don't want you trying to influence your stepson in his prosecution of the Summers boy tomorrow. Don't you think we should talk about this privately? Lisa and I have no secrets. I am not influencing Joseph. I don't have to. The facts will show for themselves that Ocean Summers killed Chris for his share of the treasure. Chris's death was an accident. Now we need it all to go away. Let this trial take its own course without your influence. I was wondering if you could give something to Ocean Summers for me. And what is this? It's a good luck charm, just... Here and who are you? My name's Mary Miller. No one you would have this would really help me. If you could just uh, hand it... It would be against policy. Sometimes we can bend the rules a little bit. I'll try to get it to him, Miss Miller. Thank you. Are you sure it was Maxine? No. It's too late for that. Let Ocean keep the trinket. 
Who's the guy that gave it to him? Danny. I want him fired by the end of the week, thank you. So, how do you think it looks? My wife taking good luck charms to the man I'm going to prosecute in court tomorrow. I didn't well, you didn't mean what? I have shown you my integrity, and you haven't given me your devotion. I wear a lot of armor, Maxine, but I don't think I can handle everything that you throw at me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm your husband, Maxine. I'm going to make love to you now. Not now, Joseph. Why not, Maxine? I've been too good to you. So maybe you don't like that. Maybe what you want is to be pushed. present my case and how to win it. I should have called. Oh, it's okay. I'm glad you're here. I need a friend. Oh, oh you have one. Come here. I heard you married Joseph. I can't believe this. I mean, I know you did it to save Ocean. I haven't saved anyone. If anything, now that Joseph and I are married, he's more Joseph Ocean. I had convinced Joseph not to attack Ocean, but now he's so angry. Listen, my father said that the Contessa knows where Anthony is, but she won't tell him. And I have to get her to tell me. That's our last hope. In your statement, you testified that the dive shop was broken into. Yes, the doorknob was broken. And that night, carbon monoxide was put into the tanks. You notice anything suspicious before you left for the evening? Yeah, I told you. I saw Dave. He was well, right um, by the front door. Dave, I thought you told me you saw Ocean. Ocean? No, I didn't say that. Think about it, Sarah. It was dark that night. There aren't very many lights on the pier. Couldn't it have been Ocean you saw and not Dave? No, I am almost certain it was Dave. Almost. Sarah, my investigation could have focused a lot more on your involvement with the tainted air. Couldn't you have put the bad air in Ocean's tank by mistake? Of course not. You, you, that couldn't possibly happen by mistake. You, you'd have to go round the back of the air compressor, unscrew the exhaust tube, sc screw it into the intake. You'd have to do it deliberately. You're a smart woman, Sarah. I can see that. That's why I'm going to put this question to you as plainly and as simply as I can. For your sworn statement and testimony, wasn't it Ocean Summers you saw hanging around the dive shop the night before Chris's accident? Why are you so interested in having Anthony come back for the trial? I think Anthony's involved somehow. He knows something about the scuba tanks. Anthony's not the one on trial here. And that young student, Rick's hired as a lawyer, is never going to be able to prove anything like that. He might not be able to prove it, but the suspicion might keep Anthony from ever coming back to St. Martin again. Anthony had nothing to do with Chris's death. And I'm going to show that to you, Rick Summers, and anyone else who may be slightly confused. You'll get us to Antigua in 27 minutes, right? 
24 minutes if we're lucky. Good. We'll be back in the courthouse with Anthony before the second witness is sworn in. You stop your trembling. Are you okay? This trial is bringing back Chris's death. This must be so hard. I'm worried, it's become a witch hunt. Don't worry. I wanted to kiss you so many times. You let me make the first move. I'm a little out of practice. Been a while. From the moment I first saw you, I've taken an interest. Can't imagine why. As a major in the police force, I can access a very sophisticated computer network. <laughs> sort of a hobby of mine, entering people's names, seeing what I can find out about them. Everybody's got something to hide. Thank you, Major Rotterdam. Let me know when you find out what I'm hiding. I was fascinated to learn that no Lisa Topping was on any cruise ship stopping in St. Martin this morning. You're wasting your time with me. You better find somebody else to play along. The recovery of target treasure rumored to be worth millions has fueled speculation of murder. Yeah, I just, I, agree. I think that it's strange that your nurse would want to imitate mom's hairstyle and wear her clothes. I think it's very strange. I have to tell you, I like it. Doesn't bother me at all. You notice that she's wearing mom's Cartier brooch? I gave it to her. After all, she didn't save my life. She's trouble. The way she walks around half naked. What are you talking about? Every morning, 6 a.m., in those high heels, she comes walking down the hallway past my room to the swimming pool. And then she's got this, this exaggerated breathing thing that she does. I'm trying my damnedest to keep her around, Will. You better get used to her. Sorry to keep you waiting. Oh, boy, look at this circus. We can't lose Ocean. And we can't lose each other. Come on, let's go. she'd miss. There's a taxi. Taxi to the Ambassador Hotel, fast as you can. Since, since I, uh, I couldn't get a testimony from Anthony that the church won't allow any evidence I have 
relating to his involvement. Prosecutions are pretty good case, don't they? Well, everything they have is, is loose and, and very circumstantial. Remember? You absolutely must not speak in the courtroom unless the judge asks you a specific question, huh? He's a stickler for protocols. It's all right. I had Anthony's call traced, so I know he's definitely here. What room is Anthony Phillips in? He checked out this morning. Did he say where he was going? No, no word at all. Just check this casino before we go. Wait right here. Have a new shooter coming in. Lucky roll. There he is. Anthony, Anthony, it's your mama. I'm sorry, Ocean. It's time to go inside. You're ready to stop. If, before we go in, I, I want you to know that I think it's awful that the Phillips family has accused you of doing this to your friend. I'm sorry you have to go through it. I've walked barefoot across 50 feet of red-hot burning coals. I should be able to make it through this. Good. Come on. This isn't like in the stains. Where's the jury? Dutch court is very different from your American system. We don't have juries. Who decides things? The judge. After reviewing an investigation that's already taken place, there's no cross-examination. No witnesses? <laughs> Only in special cases. It's much faster than what you're used to. This case will be decided today, in a few hours. Summers. Are you Ocean Noble Summers? Yes, sir. Born 1972 on the island of St. Martin? Yes, sir, I am. Prosecutor, read the charge. Your Honor, Ocean Summers is charged with willfully and intentionally conspiring to poison the air of a scuba diving tank, which was intended to be used by and eventually led to the death of Christoph Beck Phillips II on August 19, 1993, on the island of St. Martin. Mr. Summers, you know the seriousness of the charge, first-degree murder? Yes, sir. The laboratory tests have found high concentration of carbon monoxide in young Christophe Phillips' blood. I'm not going back to the courthouse. There is a man on a cigarette boat who says you had something to do with Chris's death. Dave is just trying to get more money. Well, from the look of our drained bank account, you must have plenty to give him. And you wonder why I don't want to go back? Ocean is on trial for something he didn't do. If he's convicted, he'll spend his life in prison. Things are more complicated and difficult for me than you realize, Maxine. Someone killed my brother. Your cousin. And I want to know, was it you? Of course not. Was it you, Anthony? I just wanted to scare them off. I think... I think Dave went too far. 
You have to come back and testify. I can't. Why not? Because of the danger involved. He's been beaten up. His car's been it blown up. It takes courage to stop danger. I've got courage, Maxine. Then go back and tell the judge what you know. I know you'll find a way to show us you're the same person who charmed us and made us proud of you. I'm not going back. I'm sorry. That's all there is to it. Thank you so much. How did it come to pass that Mr. Phillips was using your tank in the first place? Since I was the more experienced diver, I used less air. Using my tank, Chris could stay down as long as me. In your own words, describe what happened the day you dove with Christophe Phillips. We were in the cave. Underwater, where you found the treasure. It was getting harder to find. I was digging in the sand, and when I looked over at Chris, he was holding his temples. And then he began twisting. I, I could see that he'd spit out his regulator. He was out of control. There were bubbles everywhere. I was fighting to put the my spare regulator on his mouth. But I just couldn't, I just couldn't grab him. And then he smacked his head on the reef wall. And just stopped. I was almost out of air. So I unhitched his weight belt and began swimming towards the surface with all my, all my might that Chris would make it. I did everything I knew to save Chris. I'd give a hundred treasures to have Chris back. Your Honor. Prosecution would like to call a witness who will help clarify the relationship between Mr. Phillips and Mr. Summers. Yeah, proceed, Mr. Prosecutor. Please be seated, Mr. Summers. Your Honor, I can. Ah, please you be seated, Mr. Summers. <laughs> Your Honor, the prosecution calls Kyle Phillips. Your Honor, this is Kyle Phillips. Kyle was Chris's older brother. They grew up on this island together. They had a bond of blood, and they also had a bond of friendship. No one knew Chris better than Kyle. Kyle Phillips, before this court, do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but so help you almighty God? Yes, Your Honor, I do. Did Christoph ever discuss going scuba diving with the suspect with you? I knew they were looking for the Latarga treasure, and I warned Chris that it was dangerous. Did your brother ever discuss any possible danger? Yes, he was concerned about it, but he was trapped. Trapped? How was he trapped? Well, Ocean was always pulling Chris into his dangerous schemes. He knew how to dare Chris, play on Chris's insecurities. And if Chris didn't go along with him, he'd humiliate him. It's not him. true! Mr. Summers! Mr. Summers! Mr. Summers! Mr. Summers. Yeah, Mr. Summers, if you disrupt this court again, you rush the shirt, I'll have you removed from the room. Yes, sir. Mr. Phillips. In your estimation, Mr. Summers convinced your brother to die for the treasure with him. Manipulated him into it. Why, in your opinion, would Mr. Summers want your brother to die with him? Wouldn't it have been better for Mr. Summers to find the treasure alone and reap all the rewards himself? Well, of course it would have been better. But trade winds was in dire straits for the last few years. Ocean hasn't had a penny to his name. He has to leech off of people. He needed Chris's boat. He needed Chris's money for gas. He needed a sucker. Order. Order. Now, Your Honor, if we are to hear opinions on character, I, I, I would like permission to call Ellen Summers. I watched Chris with Ocean, and I tried to warn him. I had seen how Ocean's self-serving ways caused Hilda Rotterdam's death. Order. Chris was another of Ocean's pawns. When he didn't need him anymore, he came up with a plan to get rid of him. 
so he could keep all the treasure to himself. I'm scared, Rick. The way this is going, it's like the judge has already made up his mind. Order. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. You're dismissed. Your Honor, the prosecution would like to call a witness who will help clarify the specific mechanics of this case. Sarah Staley. Sarah Staley, step forward, please. I don't know why he's calling her. She's the one that told me about Dave breaking into the dive shop to tamper with the tanks. She should be a witness for the defense. Your Honor, this is Sarah Staley. Oh, the press would be here. I'm separated a chase in the blank. That's Contessa with two S's. <laughs> Yeah, Miss Staley, was there something you felt you left out in your original testimony? Well, yes. After turning it over and over in my mind, I remember it differently. Do you have any lingering doubts about the final statement you made to the prosecuting attorney? None whatsoever, sir. Were you outside waiting for the perfect shop. moment for your entrance? You should know. I don't have to plan an entrance. That just happened. As I was locking up, I could see someone on, on the dock walking back and forth. He was trying to be secretive, but there was no question that he was watching me. Go on. As I got halfway down the dock, I realized I'd left my car keys in, in the shop. So I, I went back to get them. And I saw the same man crouched in front of the door lock. When he saw me, he took off. Could you identify who it was you saw? Of course. It's not someone you could easily forget. It was Ocean Summers. Why? She's lying! Remove Mr. Summers from my court. Don't worry, they're not gonna get away with this. I promise you that, right? Still, you may step down. Before I adjourn to deliberate, the defense and the prosecution may make brief recommendations. <clears throat> uh, Your Honor, we know that the scuba tank Chris Phillips used was tampered with. And we know that that tainted air led to his death. However, there is no hard, clear evidence to convict Ocean Summers of this crime. The circumstantial evidence is not conclusive. My client denies that he broke into the dive shop or was even on the dock that night. There's absolutely no reason not to believe Mr. Summers when he says that he did everything humanly possible to save his friend, Chris Phillips. Ocean Summers is innocent as charged, Your Honor. Prosecution. <clears throat> Your Honor, the prosecution's report clearly demonstrates that the accused is guilty as charged. Let's take a look at what we really have here. The accused and his family were desperate for money. We have motivation. We have character testimony. The accused's relationship with the victim was manipulative and it was reckless. The lab report shows signs of an underwater struggle. And lastly, and most damningly, Sarah Staley all but witnessed the accused break into the dive shop. He must uphold the law. Sadly, we are without a doubt looking at first degree murder. I recommend that the suspect be convicted of the maximum sentence. Life in prison. Please, God, no. I'll adjourn to deliberate. We'll reconvene in one hour. Oh, 
Richard. I'm truly sorry about what's happening to Ocean. I just want you to know my prayers are with him. Thanks, Leticia. But your prayers are a little late. That dive ship girl is lying. Somebody put her up to it. Yes, I think you're right, Rick. She can't be trusted. She's going to send her son to prison. I never thought it would get this far. I never thought they'd gather enough evidence to convict Ocean. Life is full of strange punishments. I promise you that if our son is convicted, you're going to see a battle like this island has never known, within the law and outside it. Anthony, Anthony's in Antigua, and he won't come back. He hired someone to, to scare off Ocean and Chris so he could get the treasure. Anthony? Ocean didn't sabotage the tank. It was someone named Dave. The judge is in deliberation. I think Ocean's going to be convicted. Dad, I have to go before the judge. I have to tell him what I know. I don't think the judge is going to accept your testimony because it's hearsay, and I think you're too late. Why don't you be a good boy and leave me alone? I think your first staff would be very interested to learn of your record, Sonia Vatsaluski. A nurse with not one but two malpractice suits pending. What do you want? Meet me at the Pink Flamingo Hotel at 2 o'clock. Simpson Bay this afternoon. We'll work something out. Come and find out what I want. Are you ready to pick up the pieces, Contessa? If they're not too many pieces, scattered too far. It's up to us to hold the family together. Anthony, Paradise Room, beating the summers out of trade winds. It all starts with our putting our marriage back on track. You loved me once more than life itself. I could make you love me again if you'd give me the chance. I owe you a few chances, darling. Has already I know, deliberated. But, but he's here and he'll testify. But tell the judge I request the testimony out of respect for my brother. After careful study and deliberation in this case, I've reached a decision. Uh, excuse me. Uh -uh. Your Honor, I have a, a special request from the deceased sister, Maxine Phillips. What is the request? Uh, you hear testimony from Anthony Phillips. Uh, Phillips. Your Honor, this is highly irregular. Your Honor, we have already completed and compiled our investigation to introduce an irrelevant witness. This, this witness is not irrelevant! Your Honor, previously, you would not accept this evidence because I could not produce a witness for testimony. I have the witness, and I assure you, he has relevant testimony. Anthony Phillips, step forward, please. Come, come. Your Honor, this is Anthony Phillips. Anthony Phillips, before this court, do you swear to tell the whole truth that nothing but so helped you, God Almighty? I do. You know a Dave Netter, who resided for the past three weeks on a 40-foot, high-powered speedboat moored at Simpson Bay Marina? Yes, I do. How does it come to be that you're associated with this Dave Netter? I hired him to help me find Latarba, the treasure, and to uh, 
Scare off Ocean and Chris. Yes. From the information I have here, it seems that you've run yourself into financial disaster. Gambling debts over many hundreds of thousands of dollars. Oh. Hmm? Selling rum at discounted prices to distributors for cash. I was going to pay that money back. I am going to pay that money back. Must have needed the money the treasurer would have brought pretty badly. How far would you go to get it? When I told Dave to scare off Ocean and Chris, I didn't think that... You didn't he... think what? That you'd have to be responsible for your accident? Anthony didn't cause that tank to be tampered with. Anthony didn't cause Chris's death. And neither did Ocean. I did. I did it, God help me. I only meant to give the boys a scare. To keep them away from La Targa. I knew the treasure meant danger. I had to protect my family from the prophecy. Ocean's an experienced diver. He can handle any emergency. Who was I to know they switched tanks? I never dreamed that I would cause anyone to death, least of all my own grandsons. I told you, only a little bad air in the tank. I only switched the exhaust tube for a minute. It was supposed to give him a headache. No one should have, no one should have died. Summers, you are acquitted of the charge. It's over. <laughs> the makes an apology. Oh, thank God. Ocean, you made it. Justice will be served. Are you okay? I fulfilled the prophecy. Myself. Trade one's ours. Of course it's ours. It'll always be ours. Well, we're survivors, like Ocean. I'll find you. 